doing good, just starting the game up now, having some light after work snacks here, just to get something in me. I heard a lot. I heard a lot of talk about today's stuff, but I don't know any details. Um, well, I guess. people how you doing happy space saturday it's me spatula welcome to the thing anyway <laughs> y'all doing i got phil uh phil barnes here with us uh, how you doing phil uh, i'm good i'm fine just got up back from work so i'm excited to do some early dangerous perfect timing uh well yeah so obviously it's a big it's a big weekend here for elite oh by the way hi hi to loot in the chat and dark heavy eight dark heavy eight uh affirming the test and loot i hope i uh, hope you're feeling uh Hope you're feeling better. Feverish sucks. But yeah, I'm here on the Danga bus. And um, obviously it's a big weekend for Elite because uh, what's going on right now is LaveCon. Uh, which, you know, I went to in 2019. I would have loved to go this year, but the timing was just not in the cards. Um, but yeah, it's uh, happening right now. I know Tecoso's out there. Ascorbius is out there. I'm sure a lot of uh, commanders that I know are, are, are at LaveCon right now. And I'm a little bit jealous. Instead, we're going to go to ThargoidCon, uh, which is, you know, just a bunch of killing insects, which will be fun. Um, not quite the same though, but I did watch uh, Frontier's uh, live stream um, just this morning. Hey, SP4H, SP4H, is that how you pronounce it? Frach. Um, but yeah, I watched a little bit of the the uh, Frontier live stream, and to be honest, it was like uh, an hour of like stellar screenshots, and then like an hour of like reminisce about Elite's development history. So there wasn't like much in terms of the way of like new information. Um, I can't really remember any interesting factoids other than developers talking about, like, they, they apparently designed a geyser gun. Did you, did you hear about this, Phil? I did not. So so one of the developers, they were talking about, you know, as they're going through the design process, they're they're playing around and, and trying experiments. And uh, a lot of, um, you know, a, lo a lot of what they tried to do is be efficient. And, like, let, let's use things that are already in the game... Um, as mechanisms or, or, or whatever when we're designing the Odyssey stuff. And so they built a gun that essentially had the same coating as a geyser. It was a handheld geyser, um, but at full force. So when you shot the gun, it would just blow things away. And apparently they did like a little test sandbox with like a bunch of crates that you could shoot. Um, and if you shot a commander with it, they'd just go launching. And I'm like, okay, please, please, please unlock that code. Give us the geyser gun. <laughs> See stuff like that it's cool, but it also it makes me like it makes me sad because I want a geyser gun. I love it, it's cool. Alright, so uh you may be wondering what the hell am I doing in the sniffy sector. So I figured before we go do the Thargoid stuff, I want to unlock another um guardian weapon. So I've come all the way out here to the, the snoofy sectors. Let me just sell my exploration. And we're going to do just a, a little bit of mild um, grind. I, I know. I know. You all came to see Thargoids die, and it's like, oh, it's my just grinding. But it won't be It won't be that bad. We just need a few uh, keys, and then get some weapon um, components or whatever. And then we have to go get those, like, weird, um, what do you call them? Like, those rare commodities that, for some reason, uh, this needs to have. Okay, what am I doing in here? Limpets. I'm looking for limpets. Okay, I've got limpets. We're good. Alright, so, um... If you haven't done the Guardian grind, you need to get these, like, beacons to give you keys. And then after you get the keys, you have to bring them to these Guardian sites and then do this whole hubbaloo. Um, but at the end of it, we'll get some blueprints, and then we can unlock some new weapons. Take your team invite here. 
Or were you on the Dangabus, Phil, or where were you? I'm sitting in Bologna's region. Uh, we're about 800 light years away. Yeah, 12 jumps for me in this ASP, so I'll be oh, wow. a short here. That's not it's bad. like a 70, 79 light year ASP. Just yeah. made for jumping. Yeah, I've got my uh, my diamond back here, which is a pretty good all-purpose, like, uh, grindy jumpy ship with a, a 61 light year jump range. It's got everything you need. It's got collector limpets, it's got a little bit of cargo space, and it's got an SRV. What the Guardian stuff are you gonna unlock? I basically just need a bunch of weapons blueprints. I figured, well, if I'm gonna be coming out here, I'll get like, you know, three or four keys, and then just unlock a Guardian site. Uh, just do that multiple times. The old relog grind, probably. <laughs> I don't know, can you just fly up to Super Cruise and fly back down and do the Guardian sites again? Probably uh, can. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Or can you just do them in a row? Uh, in a, in a row? Yeah, like just like do the whole site, then go and un activate the pylons again, do it again in the same instance. Oh, you need to do relog or to reinstance. Uh, the old, the old relogging. Yeah. Yes. I'm not above it. I do it on occasion. For the manufacturing instructions grind, oh my god, that was so useful. Just sitting in an mm -hmm. impact site and relogging and data, and then every once in a while there'd be like 20 dudes there shooting at me, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> I guess with those like but, threat, uh, threat one, it's like a, a five percent chance or something of spawning dudes. Do, do you have the Gauss guns, the plasmas, the charge? What what are you getting? Uh, so the one I don't have is like the plasma accelerator one. It's like a plasma accelerator, but guardian. That's yeah. the one I want to get. It makes a real nice... Uh, it's the one that charges up. Yes. But I'm also considering the um, the larger version of the um, the shooty cannons, the rail guns. And the size 2 Gauss? Uh, I think I have the size 2. I think I want the 3. There is no size 3. Oh. Well, that significantly lessens the grind then. Why didn't uh, they have a size 3? I think there's a plasma size 3. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe. Well, I don't know. I just want to unlock some Guardian stuff, because yeah. it, it, my build as much as I... Uh, I I've got, like, the uh, the, fra the Guardian frag cannons, and then one of the little uh, railguns. And I'm like, I want to try something different. I like the idea of those plasma accelerators. But yeah, the, the first the first step of this, of this uh, grind puzzle is st stopping at a Guardian beacon, tickling it with a laser, it will drop a key and then uh, do that multiple times. And actually, you know, it's like I might even try to get a few keys, just keep them on the carrier. You never know when they might be uh, a puzzle item. That's, that, that is probably the number one benefit of having a carrier, is you finally have a place where you can just stow all your crap. Ooh, spooky. Where's the, where's the thing? Do you guys see the thing? Oh, there it is, there it is. Had to put night vision on. Ooh, spooky. Alright, so how does this work again? I think it's, uh, you just beam laser the energy pylons, right? Uh, on, uh where? At uh, the Guardian, uh, beacon. At uh, the beacon, yeah. You shoot the three things with uh, some weapon, I think pulse laser and multi cannon works. Probably any weapon, really. I got a beam laser. Just, uh, yeah, just uh, shoot them up. Where does it look like they want to be shot? Oh yeah, right there on the little nubbin. All right, I'm sorry about this. This is what you the want, right? You want me to shoot you? Hey, Valor, what's up? Oh, thanks for thanks for that, dude. Thanks for the super chat. How you doing? We're just uh, shooting uh, guardian beacons here. Gu guardian nubbins. Nubbins. You got to shoot all three. Then it opens up. It gives you the pearl. And then you can go uh, do the actual grind, which is the ground puzzle. Look at that space lightning! Isn't that beautiful? But how are you? Oh, you, you're getting the the fighters too. Uh, I already have the fighters actually. Well, I think I only have one fighter, so I'm focusing on weapon blueprints. But I guess there are. Um... Why won't I shoot you? you? No, I yeah, I think you. I think you need the key only for vessel blueprints. No. Uh, is that true? <laughs> I think so. Maybe oh. the chat can enlighten us. Uh, does anyone know that information? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wait, did I not charge that one fully? 
Oh, no, yeah, they did. There's the lasers. They just... The lightning takes time. We can't make this lightning uh, instantaneously. This is a Union pilot. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I know uh, Tecoso's at uh, uh, LaveCon and Ascorbius, so I can't wait to hear stories from those guys, because the developers didn't really um, talk about much, other than, I guess, some, some hits that... Um, there might, and I saw this more on the on the burr pit um, than I did necessarily from Frontier, but um, hints that like you know the Salvation arc is going to take about two weeks, and there might be an update 13, so we might be seeing um, we might be very close to new content being added to the game. And why is this beam laser? These turreted beam lasers are a little bit awkward to work with. Okay, so now all of this will open up, and then I believe the next stage is you have to scan something. Here we go. Here's the light show. Hold on, let me set my fire groups. I think it's a data link scan. Okay. Uh, am I on the wrong end? Yeah, I think I'm on the wrong end. Just, uh, excuse me while I come in here. Please don't hurt me. Here we go. There's the scanny ball. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pushing me back gently. Okay, now we data link scan it. Or comp scanner? I don't know. No, not comp scanner. Uh, there we go, there we go. Scan the guardian beacon. And out the other end, we'll pop a lovely key. Anyone see Tecoso now? Well, Tecoso's at LaveCon. I don't know where... Uh, uh, we're in LaveCon, but I'm sure we'll hear, uh, at least from next week, we'll hear uh, what his experience was. Because I found, when I was at LaveCon, uh, the coolest part was just like, you know, not outside, outside of the programming, like just walking around and talking to commanders, talking to uh, devs. My favorite memory, I think, was watching um, Yamex talk to Zach Antonacci. And he had a little notepad, just like a journalist. He was asking him, like, good questions. Okay. Oh, I need to unscoop my cargo. Cargo bay full. Oh, right, because I have limpets. I should be using those limpets, if you think about it, but no, whatever. I'll just jettison it. Alright, come here, little guy. Get in my belly. But yeah, keys are only used for vessel blueprints, just so you know. Oh, really? So this is all pointless. Oh, it's science and it entertainment. Looks cool. Okay, can you, uh, here's the question is, can you do this multiple times? Can I just go recharge these? He is without the tats just like his avatar. Oh yeah, Takosa is the cool mohawk. Like, I mean, if, if you think about it, I, I, my suspicion is he got altered in real life. Plastic surgery to look like his hollow me. <laughs> he, he's cosplaying his own uh, exactly. commander, yeah. yeah. I would need uh, cosmetic surgery to look like the spatula. Okay, it doesn't look like I can target this guy. Oh wait, no, there we go. Okay, so can I just do this multiple times without leaving the instance? If so, I might as well get like a, a few keys. This is a pretty good uh, thing to watch anyway. We'll, we'll find out, this is science. All right, I'm feeling the lightning behind me. But yeah, I wish I could have gone to LaveCon, man. It was a lot of fun when I went in 2019. Uh, they had, like, a computer room filled with, like, all the original space games. Uh, that was hard to hard to get a slot there. They were very popular. Uh, mostly it was just nice to talk to other commanders and sort of, you know, see everyone that you see in space, but not with your space legs. Maybe, maybe next year I will plan to go. Uh, if you can't go, you can at least tell a presence there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have someone bring me on an iPad and just be like, <laughs> just take, just, just take me around. <laughs> so what? Okay, so wait. If you don't need keys, then what do you get the weapons things with? Uh, you get weapon blueprints and module blueprints from ruins as well. Uh, it's in the same way you do with vessel blueprints, but that requires the key as well. But what does it take in place of the key? The, the Guardian Relic, the, the other key, 
those you can oh, the, the relics. Uh, yeah, they, you can get them from any ruin. I think uh, it's just that the key is special and can only be uh, yeah, obtained from the beacon. That's weird. Yeah, I feel like the beacons are underutilized then. I do have the uh, the one vessel. I could actually use a couple of the other vessels, but I'm not gonna because you have to go to like certain types of sites for. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Okay, I am on the side of the guardian beacon. We're just gonna slide our way across here like, on our belly like a snake. A real diamond back. Uh, okay, I think I'm stuck. Nope, we're good, we're good. Alright, now don't shoot that. There we go. Give it another scan. And I wonder, will it drop another key? That That's nice, you don't even have to uh, go to a different instance. <coughs> this is the, the one, whoever designed this beacon, give them a raise. I will use my collectors this time. Make it easy on myself. Have your limpets do the work for you. That's what you pay them for, right? Okay, which one is collector versus hatchbreaker? Uh, one. No. I think the guardian beacon is a relic in two different ways now. A relic? Yeah, both like in world, but also in like elite dangerous history. Things like that, it's not made anymore. Oh, true, true. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah, open the cargo bay. Might as well go for another key. Like, even if I'm not gonna unlock them, this is pretty easy to do. And it's like, other people might need keys in the future. I do like the idea of, like, using the Danga bus as like, uh, hey, I'll collect rare objects and sell them for people to help them with their grind once I'm done mine. <laughs> Which will be in 10 years. At the rate I've been going. I like that you can do this just over and over again, though. And it is one of the cooler uh, visual effects in the game. But yeah, it was interesting. I watched the the developers. They were basically like talking at LaveCon about like, hey, uh, um, this was my this was my favorite memory of something I've worked on Elite. And it was funny because the one guy uh, was like, yeah, uh, it's like, what did you work on for Odyssey? And the one guy's like, yeah, uh, I kind of did the puzzle that everyone hated for the um, handheld scanner. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It's like, hey, you guys reversed it at least. All good. As long as it, you know, it, it, everyone can make mistakes just as long as you fix them. Yeah, I think about that guy uh, a lot sometimes because, because you know, I'm, I'm working in the business soon and to be the designer to design something that everyone hates, it's kind of like he has to kind of care that now or kind of, you know, try to move on with his life. And yeah, yeah. It's going to be tough for him. It's got it's got to suck. <laughs> it's, it would yeah. be like, like you put out a YouTube video and then everyone just like dislikes it. it would, it's a horrible feeling. Yeah, he spent a lot of time in it. He's probably really proud of how it turned out, and then he finds out that they need to scrap it because no one wants it. So yeah, kind of sucky. That's what level designers have to do a lot. Too. They have to uh, learn to kill their darlings. Yep. Usually it's the level designers and the graphics people stuff that are being cut out because we don't have time to implement it. So uh, yeah, they're, they're suffering for that. It's just the name of the game. Can't get you have to kill your babies. Alright, we're gonna jump into your instance and crash your party now. Yeah, come on in. You, you'll you'll just uh, see the show. Look at that, there's a limpet there. Oh that's the limpet I discarded earlier. Ooh, oh nice this blue thing. haze. It's very nice. You forget sometimes how really awesome some of these little uh, areas are. It's like, you know, there's not, they don't give us a reason to come to the, uh, uh, the Guardian Beacons, except if, like, you know, uh, you're grinding for keys, which is very specific, right? And, and in terms of, like, the, the total amount of, uh, like, there's only three vehicles to unlock. There's a ton of, uh, weapons and stuff, right? So it's like, you don't actually get to come here often for a purpose. But it's quite a cool, uh, asset. Oh no, Phil Barnes' this computer crashed. So okay, so another cool thing uh, that I heard when um, uh, uh, they were talking about the developers was that 
Um, they were testing out like the airlock stuff or something like that. Um, I, I can't remember what it was, but um, they confirmed that there is a confetti system in the game. And I don't know if they were talking about chafe, maybe. Maybe it's a code for chafe. But apparently there is a uh, coding for confetti in the, in the, in the engine. So I, I, I say give, give, give us a confetti gun. That's what I want to see. Hold on, I gotta get rid of one of these limpets. There we go. Do the three ancient keys. Give me that. There we go. Alright. That's enough for now. So I think I'm gonna head back to the Dangabus. Just a temporary measure. Uh, oh yeah, we're mass locked. Wonderful. Of course we would be. That's a very large beacon. Oh, powered engines. Yeah, the thing about this Diamondback, it's got D-rated uh, uh, thrusters on it. And a D-rated uh, power regulator. So it's not the fastest ship in the world, but the jump range. It's all about the jump range. I am back. So I'm thinking, okay, so I really don't, I don't need the keys at all. Hold on, I gotta find, uh, um, where, do you, where do you get the weapon? How do you, like, how do you even find uh, which Guardian material has, like, the weapon blueprints? I don't know, there's probably a little somewhere, but I don't know where to find that. It's Probably the Wikipedia has uh, a list of ruins and what type of module uh, they give. I'll have to Google this. This is the cool thing is, you know, imagine like when these were first unlocked and people were just finding Guardian sites and no one had any idea where to go. It's like, thankfully, there is a large group of people on Elite that do all the work for all the rest of us and then just publish the results. Those 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 uh, daring scientists that dare uh, dare to face the dangers and bring to us the information that saves us precious precious time. Okay, let me just get docked here, and then I'll do some quick Google food. Crash baby's back. You talking about Phil? Yeah, me. Your crash baby. I, my computer crashed. I how, how was said your, so in the was, chat. Yeah, how was your crash? Is it a good crash? Uh, no, bad crash. <laughs> is there a good crash? There is a good crash. The one that tells you why it crashed. Ah. This was not a good crash. My computer is quite unstable these days. I don't know what's going on with it. It just crashes randomly when playing some games. It's quite uh, worrying. Play Odyssey. <laughs> I'll yes, play Modesty even when I'm playing No Man's Sky, yeah. And yes, Dark Heavy, uh, they are called Canon. Yeah, it's because Odyssey's installed, though. It's a factor. Okay, let me get rid of all these limpets. And I think what I'll do is just... And, and, and it, this took me a while to figure out, is you can just transfer your cargo to the carrier. You don't have to set up, like, complicated buy orders. So I'm just going to throw two ancient keys in there. All right, so now it's Google time. Elite Dangerous Guardian Site Weapon... Oh, what is it? Blueprint? Weapon Blueprint Sites. Okay. So this site is what Canon calls the bear. So we need to go to Planet A3 in this sector. Snoopy EQ C2110. How far is that? Well, in my Diamondback, that's just basically two jumps. Maybe three. Yeah, I think we'll just leave the carrier there. You only need to re-log for this, right? Hmm, yeah, and redo the redo the puzzle. So let me see here. So on approach, all right. Uh, na, 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 na. You'll need a guardian relic. Okay, so really I don't even need to bring this key, but I will. Alright, let's go. All right, Phil, just, just, just follow me. I'll try. What is this? Guardian Beacon. Ooh, what the hell? Why did I get this? Location transmitted to Ramtod database. Ramtod, get off my computer! I guess when you just find Guardian Beacons, you send the information to Ramtod immediately. 
Needs to get all your data, he's like uh, Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ramtar Zuckerberg. He's peeping in my DMs. Did you uh, ever do that Ramtar $100 million mission? I did, it was awful, even though I had the, the optimal canon guide for it. Do you actually finish it? Yeah. Oh wow. There was like 40 sites to visit. Not top tier gameplay. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's like I considered like, oh, like maybe I'll do a stream where I accomplish that mission, but it would ha probably have to take a place over two streams. And honestly, it's just like, it's not really that compelling. <laughs> uh, it's kind of meant to be a community effort, I think. Where you can, you know, you know, you can catalog like all the different sites and what blueprints that they have and collaborate on that. I guess in that house design, it's not really designed to be made by one person, I think. Well, it's it's more the idea of like actually doing it and having to go to 40 different sites and collect like uh, random data. How do you get that super chat off the screen? Uh, just spam, spam chat. Spam, spam, spam. I think it just like it's part of the chat. <laughs> I'm spamming my own chat. Now it should move. Yeah, just spam chat. Put F's in chat. All right, we are here, and where the heck do we need to go? Is like planet A three. One, two, three. Okay, that's not landable. Okay, that one seems to be the only landable one, so it's probably that one. Let's see here. Biologicals. Am I in the right system? I don't think so. Because that planet A3 still has uh, no first football. Planet A3. Oh yeah, I'm in the wrong system. Hold on. So then why didn't it put me to the right system? Sometimes it does this, it just drops your root. It just goes, yeah, you don't need that anymore. Yeah, I'm still one away. Too late, now we know that you are rich. Hey man, 10 bucks? That's, uh, that's a whole meal. That's a McDonald's combo with two hash browns. I'd go for that. What does that convert to in arcs? <laughs> no, I would appreciate stuff like that, thank you. But yeah, um, alright, so planet A3 is what we're looking for. Oh, okay, yeah, a lot of carriers here. That, that, that seems like the right system. A3, there we go. Who was that first discovered by? Vitor Kurgan, mapped by Sir Piona, and football by Half Day. Intre the intrepid explorers of our generation. I do have my uh, name, First Footfall, on some Guardian site out there. I just don't know, I don't remember which one. I really should have bookmarked the places that I graffitied. But it's like, you know, you could be out there and just like doing, uh, landing on Thargoid Worlds or landing on uh, Guardian Worlds and you'll see my name on the planet. And that's so cool. This is probably, I think, what, what um, I think is one of the neatest mechanics in the lead. Planetary Graffiti. When are we going to be able to own a moon, though? I want to buy a moon. Based on the flight of fleet carriers, how much do you think a moon would cost if Frontier was solid on? Uh, not that much. I mean, there are a lot of moons out there. Should bring the pre price down, I guess. I think it would be like 12 trillion arcs. Got a lot of moon, moon, moonflation, moon inflation. Uh. <laughs> moonflation. Do you see that movie Moonfall? Uh, no. It was actually pretty uh, entertaining, is how I'll put it. Guardian structure. There we go. All saddled in between all those carriers. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a movie about the moon is going to fall into Earth, uh, and then it goes batshit insane. Let's just say, um, Hollow Moon. <laughs> That's a real theory. Oh, nice, it's on the night side. 
Guardian structures are always much more spookier on the night side. I don't think I've ever been uh, embarked and walking on uh, foot in a Guardian ruin. Uh, I want to try it. Were you not there when we did the, the um, How to Die in Guardian ruin stream? I think I was here with uh, Tokoso, maybe Eddie was here. I thought you were there. Hmm, sounds familiar. Hmm. It was the Nickel stream. Maybe. Oh, yeah. It, it has, I don't it, know if it I. It's become uh, affectionately oh. referred to. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember seeing you die. <laughs> that could be any stream. It yeah, I know. That's that, des that describes my life. You were trying to get killed by the sentinels, and they were really struggling with that, and we yeah, just yeah. took pictures of you. It was. I cool, remember though. now. I, I mean, like, it, it, like again, like I think what 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 feet gameplay adds more than anything else is just like the sense of scale. They should do it like in No Man's Sky, where you can like feed like iron batteries to Guardian Sentinels, and you can ride them, and they become your companions. I would love that. <laughs> Could you imagine? Here's my pet Guardian. Where would the imagine like a sent uh, like a flock of Sentinels that would follow you around as your own little skimmer drones? I mean, who knows? When we, when we start getting like Thargoid uh, uh, land battles, maybe that would be needed. And you can spend arcs so you can change the sound of the sentinels so they sound like geese or something. Oops, 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 Seagull. Oops. Okay. My night vision is actually not that great. <laughs> I have it customized to be blue on this HUD changer, but I can't see anything. Okay, let me turn on my lights. There we go. Oh, look at that. Guardian structure. First, it's good to study these from the, the roof. So it looks like... That could, yeah, this is like the altar where you give the human sacrifice to the guardians and they give you a blueprint in exchange. And I guess they'll be, uh, well, let's just go down there. I'm going to park right uh, at the edge here. I do love the guardian stuff, actually. Really cool, really cool places. Yeah, they're cool places to visit. It's relaxing. And how you doing, Codex? Codex Necro 81. I love that name. Oh, shoot. Sounds familiar. Codex Necro. It sounds like Necronomicon. The Necronomic Codex. The, I think the best things about the Guardian site is the very atmospheric uh, audio design and uh, like suspense music. It's really great. Yeah, I usually I put on Tokosa really? tunes and uh, I don't really listen to the in game music anymore. There's also like, I think, like, like the elevator music or something from Odyssey is like copywritten. See, there's like a streamer mode now. <laughs> Which I think is a little funny. Okay, where can I land? I'm in a small ship. Just like, come on. Let me land. This is flat. Okay. I'm not getting like any landable areas. It's a nice place around here. Uh, to your right. Oh, wait, hold on. There's Phil. Yeah, this flat right here should be good for you. To your left. Oops. Incoming ground. I still can't land. Maybe it's like you can't land on the site. Maybe you have to be a certain distance away. Or not. I don't know. Okay, if you can land there. Can I land here? Can I land here too? Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Yay, we did it. Alright, now time to get into the SRV. Do you have a scorpion or scarab? A scarab. It's better for the, the cargo yeah, space. Better for exploration. In terms of fighting sentinels, it's also fine. I'm gonna go high beams. So just don't look at me. You value your eyesight. So the hope is too. It, it would be nice while we're here to just get some uh, of those. Uh, what do you call them? Uh, technology components. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What was that? Oh, here we go. We got a sentinel. Take him down. That was easy. And there's a relic. Okay, so the relic is what I need. Might yeah, on the big towers there. Yeah. Might as well get that now.
Give me that loot. Oh, it's like stuck right there. Come on. Just a little bit forward. Come on. You can do it. Yay, I did it. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not too stuck. Okay, so I guess uh, now that I have the relic, we just have to go around and shoot at the beacons. And then the beacons, uh, like these things. Here they are. Oh wait, this is actually the altar. Okay. But that's good. You need to go here first to, to reveal the, the pylon. True, true, true. So, charge it up. But every time you charge one of these, I think it does unleash a little wave of uh, Sentinel boys. Alright, you're going that way? I'll go the other way. Mm -hmm. Should be one or two uh, directly away from the altar, I think. I got one here. I actually really do like this this little puzzle. This is this is a cool little puzzle. It's the same thing with the um, in Horizons. There's also the thing with like the SRVs where you where you go to these like Horizon spaces and you have to scan all the data points within a certain time limit. And I like them. They're exciting little mini games. Oh oh oh! I heard something coming out of the ground. Oh no! Wait, it's just another relic. So we have, what, 11 minutes to find all of the uh, pylons and activate them. Easy peasy. What over here? Mm, no. There. Honestly, I probably should fix that night vision. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I finally got a suit with night vision. Found it pre oh, nice. Which suit? Dominator. Nice. Be my stealth uh, nighttime assassination suit. Oh, I hear something coming out. It's just one more now. The pylon. Just one? Yeah, we have five out of six now. It's really hard to see. Is it in here? No. I think it's away from the altar and then to the uh, to the right. I think. Hey, hold on, I didn't check in this direction. Or no, you got the guardian pylon over there. Okay. To the right. Hmm. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, but it looks like it's the place, yeah. Oh, that's just a scanny thing. Woohoo! Yeah, the last one is here, yeah. Oh, you got it? Yeah, do you wanna do the honors? I'm coming. We can shoot it together. Yeah, there it is. Alright, let's take it out. Eat lead pylon! We both got green guns, nice. We're, we matched. It's kind of like a can. Star Wars color, right? The green lasers. It is very. Well, I like how in Star Wars, like, everyone has the different colors. Like, uh, red is evil and green is good. And then uh, there's that clip of like Samuel L. Jackson talking to uh, George Lucas, and he's like, "Has anyone ever had a purple lightsaber before?" And then George Lucas is like, "No, no, I, I, I guess we can do that." Are the st storm the stormtroopers uh, blasters? Aren't they like green? Are they green? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really a Star Wars fan. I'm bad at like little movie details like that. Okay, so now we have all the pylons done. Now I have to poop in the hole. Color-coded can cannon. Coordinated cannons. Okay, so how do I do that? I just drop it? Yep. Guardian Relic. Jettison. Oh, here we go. 
Uh, Here it's comes counting. the Wizard of Oz. I am the wizard. So now we get this nice, cool, shiny ball. And I'm assuming you now have to, like, scan him. Yeah, the date link scanner. Give me the swag. Here we go, weapon blueprint. That's number and one. And more enemies. Oh, shoot. Uh, shoot them! Is that it? That's it. That was actually pretty easy. So here's the question is do we even need to relog or can we just like immediately start um, going again? You need to relog. You have to relog? Yeah, or go into Super Cruise. That could be more fun. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll do the Super Cruise thing. It feels a little less cheese. Alright, um, well. I just want to, yeah, okay, because the, like the pylons are like frozen outside. Okay. I mean, what would happen if we just shot them again? Or hold on, it does seem to be charging. Yeah, but it won't work. Yeah, when you get to the, uh, when you finally get everything charged, it'll be like, oh, you already scanned this thing. All right, back to the ships. Well, that's not too hard. It's just like, I never have time to do this damn grind, so it's good that we're doing it. But I'm thinking, okay, like four or five weapon components. And then I, I still gotta find like, what do you call it? Um, the rare commodity that goes with it, like HN Mount Racks or whatever. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> there's, there's, chuck mounts or whatever, yeah. There's always something, there's always something that you need to unlock something else that you don't have. It's a dying. The big uh, uh, bottleneck is usually the Guardian technology components. Yeah. That one, I have uh, to admit, um, I just did relogging for that because if you find them in a site, they respawn at that same nubbin all the time. So you can just sit there, um, shoot them out, relog the instance, shoot them out again, collect, collect, collect. Oh, did you find yeah, them? they're all in the same location. Yeah, indeed. They're not they're RNG, they're all in the same location. Yeah. It's uh, fun. Oh, here's another interesting thing that I watched on the LaveCon uh, stream. Apparently, all of the barnacles in the game, every single barnacle is hand placed. That's interesting, actually. That is very interesting. As opposed to the Guardian Ruins, which are, which are not. Are they? Uh, well, I don't they know. are not hand placed, no. They didn't say anything about that, but, like, the fact that all barnacles are hand-placed, it's like, okay. There's a lot of thought into where they put them. Or at least, you know, the one lore guy at Frontier is just like, I have the Thargoid map. But I wonder, if someone were to map out, like, where is every single um, barnacle located, what would that look like? Hmm, Canon has interactive maps for that. Yeah. Oh yes. Would that point out um, a hidden image that we would then run through an audio decoder that would give us a message on where Raxla is? Well, of course. Why wouldn't it? We should we should get started immediately <laughs> on this line of investigation. Oh well, you can find it at the Canon.Science site uh, interactive uh, map. Which interacts with the Guardian, uh, sorry, the Canon um, database. And have we found all the barnacles yet, or there's still many barnacles to be found? Well, how would we know that? <laughs> we don't know how many is placed by hand. Frontier uh, would tell us, wouldn't they? But the Guardian <laughs> sites, uh, on the other hand, are not hand placed; they're RNG. So we don't know if we found them all. FDev doesn't know if we found them all because they haven't placed them. Oh, really? So they, they don't know how many they are because they're just generated, you know, when we enter the system. But they must know, like, what's the criteria? Oh, what's yeah, the there, are, there are criteria, and we, we kind of know those, but... Uh, yeah, don't know all the sites. I like the idea of the developers just not knowing everything that's in the game. That's kind of cool. 
That's the one. That's the one benefit of like procedural generation. It's even the people who create the game. Uh, there's stuff for them to discover. Oh. All right. Let's get that relic out of the way. Uh oh. It's not being shot at. What? Relic is glitched. I've seen this before. We might be screwed. There are more than one of those ancient relic uh, pillars. Power cell. Power cell. Technology! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! I might as well look for these technologies. I do actually really like the mechanic where, like, there are hidden panels on some of these walls. And you just have to shoot out, like, a chip of the panel. Though, on the other hand, like, who puts technology in the wall? I guess the Guardians do. Alright. It's a Guardian air conditioner components. <laughs> what up, Orange Phoenix? How you doing? Shoot harder. I don't know if... if can you... I wish you could char charge up your SRV guns. I wonder if you can shoot the panels with, like, on-foot weapons. Who's this? Commander Padawan RB. There's another commander here. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Let's Hopefully. kill him. No, no don't! Watching. We must be peaceful. At least at first. At least give him the impression that we're peaceful. Then he won't expect it when we blow him out of the sky. Oh, by the way, I should scan these things. You get codex data from scanning these. Uh, now shoot. Kabuku. Maybe the Guardian Sentinels will kill this unsuspecting commander. And then we'll feel bad about it. Or not. Arch Phoenix, by the way, are you are you at LaveCon? Are you here about LaveCon? Because uh, you were given a shout out at LaveCon. Uh, can... who? Uh, Orange Phoenix, because uh, oh, they yeah. were they were showing his uh, screenshot. Yeah, I can't get these relics down. We might have to reset this because uh, I think it's screwed. If I can't get a yeah, relic, I can't open the damn thing. Right? Yeah, let me try. If you can get a relic. There's a relic over by me, by the way. Oh. You're already shooting at it. Is it not shooting for you? I'm gonna try to get... Oh, good idea. You're not 8 to 10? Well, I saw Frontier gave you a shout-out. I can't remember what the... Uh... Oh, it was for the... They called the originator of the, uh, the, the spell feed. Can we get up on this pole? We're like SRV strippers. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. They gave you gave you a nice little shout out um, during the, like the Arthur and you know Bruce and all the developers. They didn't really talk much about like stuff that's coming to the game. Unfortunately, it would have been nice to uh, have a little sneak peek at something. But uh, I guess in a couple weeks maybe we'll get something. The, the commander speak. Trying to boost you. The what? He was, talk he was talking in the local. Oh, seven commander, let me help you. Please. We need it. <laughs> or wait, is he, like, gonna help us find the far god? He does show his, like, red. But that could be my HUD colors acting up. I am using yeah. custom HUDs, right? He's yellow. Warning, hollow 50%. Ooh, ooh, okay, hold on. Better take it easy. This ain't no scorpion. You're there in spirit. Well, drink spirits and wish I was there. Yeah, I would have liked to go too. It's just like, it's a lot to go across the damn ocean. Do you have a relic? Oh, by the way, like, if, um, if he gets, if he puts the relic in the hole, do we all get to scan the thing too? Uh, I think only one person can scan the thing. 
Wait, what the hell? Who's shooting? Uh, it's me, I'm trying the other oh. one. Okay. He's gonna get one for us. Oh, nice! See, this is why I like playing in open. So, okay, let me just switch to science mode so I don't accidentally shoot this guy. Yeah, because maybe it's his instance and only he can get the relics. Oh, look at that! Awesome! It actually worked. What did he do? He took the relic. He was able to get it off the thing. Awesome. Can you get that bar? All right. So now we got to now we got to charge pylons. How many pylons are left? There are six pylons. Oh, this guy knows what he's doing. See, I like it when you just randomly log on and there's someone there that knows more about you, more about stuff than you. It's like great. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that was me. Okay, I think there was a pylon over here that I didn't get. Where it be? Nope, that's a casket. Oh, yeah, there it is. And shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, need more weapons. There we go. I guess that is that all the 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 pylons we need. Or? One more. One more. You should see a message on the, the top right there mm -hmm. when we Take activate one. Message on the top right, okay. Under your ship name or whatever. Maybe only I see it when I shoot it, I don't know. Yeah, Arthur is super kind. I like I like Arthur uh, in the community team for Elite. Oh yeah, Ar Arf. 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 Arthur told me, yeah. Last one should be over here, right? Uh, I don't know. Oh no, Padwan. The Sentinel. Yeah, last attacking. one is here. I'll distract the Sentinel. The last one. Yeah. Okay. I do really love the ambiance of this of this site. Oh no no! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Oops. <laughs> sorry. Bad driver. I'm gonna take these weapon parts. I don't know if I still need them, but uh, it's always good to have. Them. Come. But he didn't see that move coming. Ow, ow, okay. <laughs> I think he's dropping it off. Here we go. The ball is coming out. He's unleashed the wizard. It's like a genie in the bottle. It does look so cool, though. I'm like, hold on. Let me make sure I'm doing a, a code. Okay. Scan it. I hope I'm doing a codex scan. There we go. And what is that? Guardian flip. Oh, 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 stop shooting me! The Sentinels are really not that difficult, though. No. Like, if, if there were 20 of them, it would be quite the, the fight of a lifetime. Sweet. Thanks for the. Can you help? 
there. Mucho amigo. That's the way it should be done. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Sorry for that. You are welcome. I was mounting you. Nice. I liked it. Now for the reorbital reset. Just drop a relic in front of that. Square block, square hole. Got it. <laughs> oh, Phil! Your one wheel is going absolutely apeshit. Oh, oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> you can see it on your screen as well? Yeah, just hold, hold that there. <laughs> yep, I want to yep. do a scientific experiment here. Oh, yeah, the, the shaking does transfer. Is this dangerous, though? That's the question. Okay, shields up. Can I somehow launch myself off your wheel? What if I try to get under it? It's quivering with anticipation. Come on, wheel. <laughs> okay, I actually don't want to die because my SRV will be gone. Alright, back to the ship, Robin. But yeah, the interesting, I can't wait to hear some stories from Labcon. Tacoso, Scorb. Because, you know, it's like, af after the uh, the initial part of uh, uh, Labcon, at least back in 2019, uh, Frontier had an open bar. So people get real drunk. And when people get drunk, sometimes uh, interesting things happen. Uh, open bar is nice. I love it. Yeah, it was really nice of them to do that. We did have that at the uh, Nordic Game Conference as well, uh, uh, early this spring, where Sh Shark Mob uh, bought beers for everyone to yeah. drink as many as they wanted to do. It was crap beer, but it was cheap free bear, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, I don't care if it's free. Uh, if, if you can give me rubbing alcohol, I'd be happy. <laughs> so they gave like uh, 1,000 beers per, per night or something uh, to, to the entire conference. Oh, that's cool. But they are sponsored by Chinese Tencent companies, so do you have money? Yeah. Or owned by Tencent, rather. I mean, like, you know, it's like LaveCon isn't an official Frontier event. They don't have to do that, right? Like, the fact that they show up is pretty cool. The fact that they show up and then, you know, open bar and they're actually mingling with people, that's pretty cool. That's stuff that I wouldn't say, like, that's something they need to do. It's something that's, that's nice that they do. I'm still on the surface, so don't reinstance just yet. Okay. My ship had trouble landing. Oh. Landing? Uh, yeah, I had to recall it. Oh. Did it take off on you? Mm, yes. Hmm. So but I'm uh, boarding now, so one second. So this was another interesting thing that um, Frontier said, is that the the whole thing where you wave at your ship to dismiss it, that was someone's parting gift. As in, like, someone was leaving the company, and then, I guess, like, uh, uh, decided, hey, before I go, I'm going to create this really cool feature. Uh, which feature was that? Uh, the fact that you can wave at your ship to dismiss it. Oh, you, you can? Yeah. Oh, cool. If you emote wave at your ship, it'll it'll take off. And I think if you clap your hands, the lights turn on and off. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Yeah, okay. Let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me try and demonstrate it. Not the ship taking off, but I'll do the, the clap thing. Uh, I mean, it's a first out. It is a neat so, little... Yeah. It is a neat little feature that, you know, it's like... Who thinks of that, right? Alright, coming back in to drop. Probably wouldn't be too hard to code, so it's kind of like a fast thing to do, and it's kind of a fun thing to do as well. Yeah. Oh, Orange Phoenix saying that LaveCon is primarily a charity and elite appreciation event. Exactly, it's just like a fan thing that they are generous enough to come to its sponsor. And that uh, Dr. K's parting gift was the, oh, uh, yeah. the gestures. Brilliant. 
Dr. K actually built the, the cosmic engine or whatever the hell they call it. <laughs> the Stellar Forge. The stellar Forge, yeah. Popping Hands works on SOVs too? Oh, that's cool. Let's try it out. Could be neat for a music video. Oh my god, my night vision is so weak. I can't see the ground really well. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, almost a perfect landing. Let's see if we can find it. But that's nice. We just had some random commander help us. These people are out there. For every gank or griefer you, you encounter, you will find like two of those helpful, uh, helpful, peaceful souls. And everything that they have earned is ripe for the taking. If you bring, if you bring Hatch for <laughs> you imagine though, the guy helps me find, uh, get a Guardian Blueprint, and then I like Hatch break him and take his cargo. How horrible would I have to be to do that? Okay, wow. Yeah, I feel like I need a docking computer to land at this site. It does not want me to land anywhere. Oh, wait. Hold on. There's something there. Just oh, now, really I, hard and it works. now I know why Codex Necroid the one looks familiar, because he's in canon. Oh, there you go. You can see him in the squadron chat right now. Fellow cannoneer. It's always good as you can see if you're in an instance with someone. Whether you can scan them or not, players will show up there. A very useful tool when you are uh, in open. Because sometimes the gankers will hide like behind the hills, like a kilometer off the site, out of sensor range. But if they're in the instance, you're you're. Uh, I guess there's some sort of like uh, commander detection or whatever. The commander detector will find them. Okay, so let's see if the relics are no longer glitched. Uh-oh. It's still glitched. Uh-oh. Alright, Phil, you might want to see if you can try it, but if not, what do we do? I can go up there and put them, punch it. Punch it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah with the, the fist. That's a good idea. Let's try it. I know. Punching, punching an ancient guardian relic. Hey, I got oh, one loose. You got it loose. Can try punch it anyway. <laughs> no, I don't want to destroy it. We need that precious, precious relic. If we find another one, we can try punching it off the top of the tower. Precious relic is like twelve thousand credits at the black market. It's precious for the in the sense that we <laughs> need it for this stupid puzzle. <laughs> So actually, aren't, aren't the aren't the guardian relics like the highest selling of them of the guardian doohickeys? Maybe. Okay, where did we find that technology component? Is it here? Because it will always be in the same panel, which is honestly super convenient. Yeah, there we go. Some more technology can never really hurt. Okay. Alright, let's we got the relics, so we just have to shoot the beacons now. Oh, hold on. I still feel the need to always um, scan these things. I've not actually run into um, situations where like I need the data. But I think there is one type of data that's like a super choke point. It's like gamma or something. Uh Okay, where am I? I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. Oh wait! Pillars. Alright, it's shooting time! Uh... That's interesting, yeah, I guess if, uh... Your SRV is glitched... Oh! What's that? Oh, it's just another one of these. If your SRV is glitched, that's a good tip. Just, just get out and, uh, punch it. <laughs> yeah, I tried using my weapon uh, on it, and it actually worked. The, the punching didn't knock it loose, but uh, hitting it with the mach some machine gun knocked it loose. Nice. Doing real science here today. Is that one done? I think it's done. 
Can we charge pylons with unfit weapons? Ooh. I guess what you would need like an energy weapon. So like the the oh. Aphelion or the uh yeah, I got I got a laser here. Oh, hold on, hold on. Someone's shooting at me. Where are you at? Lousy Sentinel. Go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do it with the laser weapon, yeah. Oh you can? Yes sir. Okay, so yeah, as you can see this relic is not working, so let's let's try this out. Let's get into my dumpster shrimp. My scavenging suit. Prepare to beat your maker! I'm gonna punch this pylon out. Is this actually working? <laughs> Are you punching the pylon? Yes. <laughs> oh, I hope it worked. It does not seem to be working. Or it's not the pylon, it's the uh... The relic. Oh, the relic, okay. Okay, so you, you can get relics off with guns, but not punching them, apparently. Did so you try the gun? Yeah. Let's try charging the, uh... Charging, <laughs> charging with our fists. My fists of fury. Okay, I know there is a pylon over here, right? Yeah, to the right, yeah. Through here? Here. Through. Oh, there it is. Okay, let us try using our electric fists. My my own uh, um, dynamic sexual energy will be transferred into this pylon. If this works, I swear. Okay. It's actually a little tall. I feel short compared to it. Come on, let's get that kinetic energy. I too can... <laughs> I can do I, feel can like I boost I'm you? Doing Dragon Ball Z. Boost me how? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give me a boost. Okay. Now I'm on Phil's head. Per oh, hold on. You're slippery. I told you not to oil up before these. <laughs> okay. Uh, no reaction. Okay. Well, what about just like regular, good old-fashioned guy? Oh yeah, so they doesn't care about laser weapons, SMG will do fine. Interesting. Alright, well apparently there's two more pylons. Must be the I love the uh, C44 with increased mag, uh, 90 bullets in the magazine. <laughs> it's like a small machine gun. Mini, mini, mighty mo, I wonder where my fist will go? <laughs> Everywhere. These, these, these fists have seen eons of uh, hard labor. You should try the uh, handheld scanner on the orb later, the big data orb. The handheld scanner? You mean like yeah, the you uh, scan gun, whatever. Oh, interesting. The one they use for the profile cloner, you know. Like try and steal the profile of a guardian orb. Yeah, like can you know just like the regular scan function? And it would be cool if you could do it at the site, but totally on foot, you know. Ooh, more technology! Uh-oh. It's stuck. Hold on. We can do this. It's gotta do a little bit of, uh... Yep, there we go. Do we get it? I don't think we got it. Hold on. Yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. I think so. Yes. Okay, so where are the... Where are the last pylons? I think there was one down here. I'm on one. Maybe not? I thought there was one at the entrance to the base, but no, that's a relic. Maybe just past the relic. Uh, there is, but that one's already active. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Go right down here. I really do like the, the layout of these sites, but man, these guardians uh, and their hills. Oh, we got a sentinel. Oh wow, he's actually like not even close to dead. Oh, because I'm not in turret mode. 
Alright. These guys are a little more than annoyances, really. Like, they're not really much of a challenge. You never know when these things might come in handy. Unfortunately, there are no uh, trading mechanisms for Guardian uh, stuff like there is for, like, normal engin engineering materials. Like, it'd be nice to trade for technology components, like trade in your uh, wreckage parts or whatever. Oops, I think I just picked up a dead body. Ooh, a random technology component on the ground. Phil, did you shoot one out? Mm, no. Oh, maybe that was the one from earlier. Maybe it got catapulted all the way over there. Interesting. Can the Sentinels drop them? I don't think so. I don't know, I don't think so. I've never seen them do it. Okay, where's that last pylon? Is it over here? Oh, you got that one up. And we got that one up. It's the one in the back to the right. The back to the right, okay. Go opposite the machine, but then go to the diagonal right. <laughs> you made it through those pylons so smoothly. And then I just smacked into them. The, the one we did the last in the first run, if you remember. I, I am a, the one I we did together. I thought we the did. We I did thought it was the other end. I was over. Oh, no, no. Here. Well, there's no lighter, so it's gotta be this one. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I wonder if grenades work. You wanna try? Let me back yep. up my SRV then. <laughs> Phil is going to try some science here. To that charge. No, but it might, might have missed. Try that yeah, the shield work. generating grenade. The one that generates uh, the uh, energy. Yeah, how, how to hit with this one. Um... No. no. The one that creates the shield cell. The protecto grenade. Oh! Look at that! It's coming off the actual uh, pole. Yeah, the shield uh, generating grenades, especially because they are sticky. They will, you know, stick to the surface they hit and not bounce. Okay, but what if we got it right in there? Like, right in there. Guardian orb, bounty detected. Okay, hold on. So, first of all, let's pick the right grenade. Shield projector. And... Whoa! Okay, that does nothing. And I can't shoot you. <laughs> I'm protecting this relic. That bubble is pretty OP. It's like 10 seconds of invulnerability, and you can shoot out of it, but not in. It's, and it's sticky, so it's awesome. Well, that one's not sticky. Look out, look out! Oh, I think I just disabled your SRV shields. Did we get it? I think we got it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Back to the uh, the wizard. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. The altar. The altar of the guardian uh, sacrificial altar. Yeah, but try the uh, the handheld scanner on it just for. Oh, true. I mean, true. It, won't, it won't work, but. I want to clone its profile. I want to be a guardian orb. Uh oh. I'm on a black screen for an unusually long period of time. Uh oh. I might have to relog to menu. Okay, keep that instance open. I'll hold the fort. It says I'm in danger. All right, I'll wait. You are not in danger. You are in Dangus. This is this is not combat logging. <laughs> Combat logging against Guardian Sentinels. Okay, back into open. Hopefully we will just spawn into that instance and be able to still complete it. At least now I kind of know where all the pylons are. It took a couple tries. Okay, uh, team in Yeah, I see you. Excellent, excellent. I'll send one. I don't see the Guardian, uh, 
pylons, though. Or maybe maybe they, they they stop lighting up after. Are you by the uh, the altar? Uh no, but close. I'm there now. Okay. Yeah, because like all the things are like down for me. But hold on. All right, let's see what happens if I still try to insert the relic. I may have pooched it. Oh, no wait, there we go, there we go. Alright, so let's try first the uh, scanning bob. Danger, Spatula Robinson. Okay, let's try cloning its profile. No, that does not work. Oh, it does scan. There is like a scan. Oh, no, wait, that's my jump boost level. Oh, you can get inside of it. Oh, uh, yes and no. Whee! Oh, there's a relic at the center. It's like a bouncy castle. <laughs> Do you not okay. say this? What? I see that you I'm in, the, bouncing? in the middle. Oh, are you not jumping? No. That's just happening? Yeah. Okay, what happens if I if I scan this while you're still there? Is that gonna then crush you? Let's see what happens. Let's see if Phil dies. Oh, you're being shot at. <laughs> you're bouncing up and down. In front of the ball. No? Okay, it went right through you. Oh, you just stopped bouncing. Interesting. Okay, where's the other... I know there's another sentinel around here. No, that's a tablet. Did you kill the other sentinel? No. Oh, he's behind you. Yeah. Uh, behind the... Uh, yeah. Oh, there he is. Shooty, shooty, shoot, shoot. Yeah, if there were like, like, imagine, imagine if you were at a, a human facility, and then a bunch of ground-based Thargoids come in from one side, and an army of like a hundred Sentinels come from the other. That would be pretty cool. I'd pay, I'd buy that for a dollar. So is that three blueprints now? What yeets are, wait. Do those things yeet our uh, SRVs? Yeah, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll do one more. One more for safekeeping. That should give me enough, because I think I, I already have uh, one weapon component. So with five in total, I'll be able to unlock, because I think that the size three ones take two weapon components. Mm, are you sure? Uh, no. I think it's just one per module. I'm pretty sure there was one uh, size 3 turreted that takes uh, two blueprints. I'm not 100% sure though. Alright, let me in. Alright, 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 there we go, board. Uh, if you go to the top of it, it shoots you up, at least it did before. Oh, really? Okay, we need to try that again. Just to just to do science on it. Now I'm worried if you leave the ball for too long, does it go away? Like do you lose your component? Uh, come on, bud. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. Some of them uses two weapon blueprint fragments, at least if the Vicky is to be believed. That's a little excessive. Uh, two weapon blueprints, does that mean that you get two weapons? No. Then wouldn't it just but be one don't really in, blueprint for a don't pure really weapon? In, don't really need to target the weapons anyway, they're not really useful. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I'm gonna just go and some cruise. Yeah, I'm doing the same. Alright, one more little round of that site, and then uh, we shall start heading to... Uh, well, I guess I have to figure out what I need to unlock the things that I want to unlock. But there's a, there's a tech broker right um, in HIP. 
tutu whatever the heck everyone's at right now. I like some of the names of these uh, uh, um, uh, characters. Space Piercer, Utopian Nightmare, something else. Endeavor, that sounds like there's got to be five million endeavors. Fortress Europe. El Braben. Is that Braben? But I do think uh, NPC names and fleet carrier names are my favorite. Alright, starting to come back down. Fleet carrier names can be a source of drama as well. Oh yeah? Yeah, it caused drama in my previous squadron because uh, it was a kind of like a serious squadron, but people just kept, you know, naming them, that, them after their favorite like porn stars or anime characters or whatever. Carrier McCarrier face? Yeah, I know. Worse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> can you rename your carrier? Like, if I want to rename the Dangabus something one day? Mm, yeah, you can. I think you need to be in like a carrier administration system, but you okay. can. You know, they don't make you like buy the carrier all over again. Like, have to sell it and buy it. No. Fire everyone. Uh, plasma Charger Fixed Large. Yeah, I think that's the one that I want. Or maybe the turreted one? I don't know. Uh, fixed one. Fixed one is more damage. That's probably... Uh, yeah, like a turreted Plasma Charger? It seems a little excessive. Let me get a little bit closer. What are my lights? There we go. I like to light up the structure a little bit. I wish you could also engineer your lights to go longer. Come on. No, you're on suitable terrain. <laughs> this is what I do, is just bounce along on the dirt until it lets me actually land. Whoa, boy. How about over here? There you go, perfect. Perfect landing. <laughs> Alright, last little uh, thingy. So yeah, that's the one that requires two weapon blueprints. So, yeah, I think that's the one I was trying to unlock, which is why I had that in my mind. But I think I need like something like HN shock mounts or some other, uh, one of these like rare materials that you can only get from like certain places. There's like six or seven. They're not quite rare goods, but they're pretty, pretty dang rare. Let's just secure a relic. Oh, look at that. It worked this time. And don't forget those technology components. Those are absolutely uh, good to get. This one? Yeah. Give me that loot. Mm -mm -mm. I think there was actually one over here, too. Was it you? Yeah, it was. Ooh, all these technologies. Do I need the power cells? No, I'm at 300. Okay, so pretty much just get to work on those pylons. Ah! <laughs> oh, God! You blew past there. Oh, here we go. Here's a pylon. Shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, ten times microweave cooling hoses. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Okay, so that's one. I'll do the one at the far back corner, the one we did last. Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay, a little disoriented from that. Yeah, well, I still remember where this one was. Somewhere back here. Uh oh. Sentinel boy. He didn't stand a chance. Here we go. Okay. 
guess you have to wait for them to open. Are there more technologies? Power cells. Power conduits. And power cells. But yeah, the Guardian Grind, like, it is a... Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, it's one of those things where I don't want to do it, but then I'm like, it's not that bad when you do it. It's the technology broker unlocks. It's that last step of, like, go get some ancient shock mounts. I just want you to be carrying cargo. It's kind of annoying. There's so many areas in this game where I'm just like, why would... So, like, why would an engineer require this kind of stuff? Like, don't you have stock of materials... Can you imagine going to the hardware store and being like, I need a hammer. And they're like, okay, just go cut down a tree and mine some metal and bring us those materials and then we'll and then and then we'll charge you for the labor. Yeah, it's just gameplay purposes. It's true. It's the, but the old still. gameplay loop. Uh what pylon have we done? That one. Which one? The one I just did. We're all done oh. now. Oh, yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Perfect timing. Oh, hold on. I'm being shot at. Nope. Not by you. In your left tank. Oh, there he is. He's backstabbing brute. That was the end of him. Should I stand on the thing now? Yeah, stand on the thing. With my SRV, yeah. Just like scan this with my codex scanner. It's here, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One sec. One sec. Will you scan? Looks like you want to scan. One specific little part of you wants to scan. Because these codex things, like even if you scan these um, uh, thingies, you get uh, codex discoveries for them. It's, it's a small bit of cash, but uh, it's more for completing the checklist. Okay, jettisoning relic. Let's see what happens. Oh god. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> and he's off! <laughs> it is a little SRV uh, trampoline. -y. 305 meters! Are you still going? 400! Uh, no, I'm going down now. Let's see if we can follow filled his grizzly potential end. Oh, you're alive. Well, that's good. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's great. Uh, <laughs> okay. It was fun. I wonder if I can just get a last minute boost. Whoa, here we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Bye! So that's how you run away from a sentinel very effectively. <laughs> uh, hold on, where's my ship? Oh, here it is. Perfect. Alright, we're done. We've done the Guardian Grind. It also yeets on foot? Oh, I did not know it yeets on foot. We should try that, but maybe another time. We got what we came for. Let's not get greedy. Back to space. Do you get, um, what do you call it? Like elite combat points for uh, killing uh, Guardian Sentinels? Are they like kind of like scouts? Like they're like elite? No idea. Probably not. Damn it. I do love how the, the, the busty HUD, I should say busty, <laughs> the busted HUD, uh, where like it'll green out for a second, but I actually like that because then I have to, I can refresh it by slamming F11. And it kind of feels like, you know, I'm in an old busted ship and I just have to smack the dashboard to make it work. I remember when, growing up, I had one of those TVs where it had, like, the, the two dials on them. Where they were, like, you know, like, six on the one dial and then there was the other dial. You could use the dials in combination. And literally, the TV would go fuzzy and you'd smack it and the damn thing would work. It was incredible. I missed that. And, like, blowing into a Nintendo cartridge. To fix it. 
Okay, um, so heading back to the Snoopy ILNC thingy. To the Danga bus. We'll start plotting a route. So, okay, I guess the next thing I need to do is figure out uh, where do we get those unlocky materials. I probably need two types of materials now that I think about it. So do you have all the Guardian stuff you need now? Let me see. Okay, Inara has not updated as of yet. But okay, I want the Guardian Plasma Charger fixed large, so I need 10 microwave cooling hoses. And I think the other one I wanted was, was it the shard cannon that I don't have? You're asking me? I don't know. <laughs> I think I have the Gauss cannon. And I need power converters for that one. Hold on, I will, um... We'll do is we'll get back to the carrier. I'll program a, a jump because I think we're about two jumps from where we need to be. Um, and I'll look it up. And R is great for this. Uh, actually, I'm looking it up as we speak. So, yeah, I think what I want is the Guardian Chard Cannon. And for that, I will need power transfer buses. So, what I can do. There's a lot of complicated plotting. Complicated root plotting. It's in my bones. Uh, where would I do that? EDDB.io? So I need... Well, first of all, where's these microweaves? Microweave... Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Slamming into a sun. <laughs> okay. Microweave cooling hoses. And I'm looking for like proximity to Merope and it says zero. So wait, are microwave cooling hoses like mission only kind of things? Is that uh, what we're dealing with here? Maybe. Whoa. 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 This might be more complicated than I thought. Okay, what about these power converters? Do to do, do yeah. power converters. They are they are mission only, yeah. So microwave cooling hoses, I have to go find missions to do. Oh boy. Hey, gameplay! Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, how, so then how do I find the missions? <laughs> Is it just like random? Yes. Okay. Well, this is this is part of uh this is this is literally dangerous. It's hey, I wanna do one thing, and you have to do 70 things to do that one thing. <laughs> And half the fun is just figuring out where, how do I do it. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of uh, Valheim. I played like Valheim almost all day on like Friday. Ah, I do tell. I do enjoy it. Um, I've, I'm in the Black Forest, which is kind of like the second biome. Hmm, so you kill the boss. Sorry? So, so you kill the first boss, yeah. Yeah, I've killed like the deer boss. And now I have to kill the elder. But he's a long way away, so I had to build a raft, and I was just sailing around. I'm like, this is cool. I like the sailing mechanic in the game. There's, like, wind and everything. And if you're like, oh, yeah, it's, like, easy going there, but then going back, oh, no, I'm against the wind. And now I have to just, like, paddle myself. But I hear there's, like, sea monsters in the game. There are. Oh, boy. Uh, power converters come from Toshi Station. <laughs> Okay, Luke. Oh, what up, buddy, man? Uh, can't you trade stuff for those mats? I don't know. I, I think, like, they're not materials. They're commodities, right? Yeah, I don't have any of those microweave on my free carrier. Sometimes I keep stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, if you got yeah, if you guys have the materials, then I'm happy to trade with you. But yeah, no, it's like, no. This, is, this is the part of the, where it's like, yeah, it's like, I, I think they... When the engineers were initially released, and this is back when they didn't have like set requirements, like it was RNG, right? So you put your materials in, and you'd basically spin the slot machine, right? And um, there was a requirement for mo I think it was like all the G5 upgrades, upgrades for every um, piece of engineering. There was also a commodity requirement, like they had these requirements everywhere, and people flipped out. They thought it was just way too much, like it was too mean, too too much work, like. You know, again, like this is a game, not a not a second job kind of kind of deal, and so they removed it, and it was like, yay! And then they added the tech brokers, and they're like, 
we're doing it there. <laughs> and they haven't changed it since. So you just kind of have to... At least you don't have to do it for everything. It could be worse. They had it everywhere before. Every facet of engineering used to require this. Okay, so... I'm looking here, and I see where I can get power converters. And there's a place very close to Marope called uh, Whitson Hub. So maybe we'll go there. And uh, then we can hopefully find some missions for the shock mounts. So let's just see if we can get there. It's a little bit out of range, but... Hold on, I'm going to bookmark it and call this... Uh, what is this? Power... Con I'll go call this Tashi Station. So there, Tasha Station, that's where you can get your little thingies. And hold on, oops, I need to redo that. Tashi Station, and I want to add to favorites. That way I can just go like this. And it's like right there. Bacon, bolognas, medical supplies. <laughs> Thargoid Barnacle for Encounters. I've gotten into the habit now of naming my bookmarks, and I have to say, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so I need to find somewhere that's like, like 500 away. Oh boy. It's so like even Scardy. I could jump to Dekiat maybe. No, not quite. How about Jackson's Lighthouse? Ooh, eight light years out of range. Well, I could just go like near Jackson's Lighthouse. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just trying to think what would be the next... So while I'm doing that, I can go jump the carrier a second time. Where's all this happening? HIP thingy. Okay, so I think, yeah. What about Meanie? No, that's too far. Well, that's fine. We'll just go very close to Jackson's Lighthouse. Maybe we'll benefit from the uh, neutron jump. Uh, in the engineer's beta, they needed fish. Are you serious? They were like, we need some fish to finish off this uh, smelly bee blazer that makes the enemy ship smell really bad. Like dead fish. All right, there we go. Uh, jumping in 15. So let me disembark and then hang out on the bridge. I'll probably do a bio break here. And uh, then we shall collect some of these rare materials. Hopefully get those ancient shock mounts. And then jump the carrier over to Thargoid land. And hopefully kill ourselves some Thargoids. So right now there is a community goal. So there's been like a string of Thargoid salvation community goals. The first one was delivering uh, like medicines and reactive armor and that kind of stuff. Like kind of humanitarian, right? Like, no matter where you are on the on the you know I hate salvation spectrum, you know delivering medicine to people it's that that's something everyone can get behind. And then the next bit was delivering guardian objects, right? So like yeah, bring me relics and, and orbs and all that sort of stuff. I wonder if I should have actually been doing more of that. Um, like I said, that is still going. Uh, you mean the first or second? The what? The first or the second time. You were supposed to deliver the Guardian stuff. There was, was a second, uh, there was one week with the Guardian, deliver Guardian artifacts and stuff, and we reached like tier 5 out of 5 there, and the next city was deliver more Guardian artifacts. Oh, was it? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know they actually had two CGs. <laughs> exactly the same CG a second week in a row, so cheap. Yeah, I've not been paying. Uh, the tech was like, oh, we actually need more of those things, so please deliver more. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's um, low in for, low in for FDEV. So basically, FDEV, like, like, again, underestimated people's uh, capabilities and had to reboot the CG. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> but like, uh, okay, so the, so after that, that, that now the current CG is is kill Thargoids and hand in their bounties at a nearby uh, mega ship. So that's the one that I'm going to try to participate in. Uh, what they're giving away for this one, I think it's like an engineered weapon that we, I don't know if we've seen before or not, but... I'm always in when the community goals are either skins or engineered weapons, even if my morality does not um, agree. Like, I don't, I, you know, there's part of me that goes, I don't know if I want to help this salvation anymore. But it's like, at this point, I kind of want to, I also do want to see where this goes. <laughs> I want to see salvation get munched on by Thargoids and the Thargoids to burn the bubble. I think we all have that part of us inside of that. That's what we all want to see as players. Um, I think the story is gonna become whatever it's gonna be in, no matter what we do. But yeah. Yeah, I think we're on an inevitable railway track. Like, the only thing that I could think that in, in the back of my mind is like, they said something early on that, like, based on how players interact with Thargoids might determine how the story goes, right? But then they gave us only tools to really fight the Thargoids. Like, there's not much we can do. We can feed them, uh, we can do research limpets, which they don't like. Um, and that's about it, outside of shooting them. <laughs> 
right? Um, so it's clear that they want us to be in, in conflict with the Thargoids. And, you know, I still, I'm in the camp of, like, I'd rather understand what they're trying to do and see if we could, like, communicate and ultimately make them into pets and have, like, you know, Thargoid wingmates. That would be cool. Um, but for now, it looks like the war is inevitable. So, like, my only thought is, like, by helping Salvation, am I putting some black flag on my account that the Thargoids will never talk to me again? But... That's not no. how Frontier works. They're not going to, like, gate content off. Like, if there was future Friend of Thargoid content, I'm sure you just probably have a Thargoid reputation that resets to zero that you would need to, you know, just do later. Um, hold on. Ne Codex Necro is saying there are some carriers with those commodities um, in Dijon. But that might be worth checking out. Let's see if any commanders are selling them. For microwave cooling hoses. Well, those are the hard ones. Like, I'm, I I should be able to buy these power converters at Taji Station. Uh, should be three running right now. Three what? Three three carriers? CGs. Or three CGs. Talking about CGs, yeah. Yeah, there, so there's this other CG, and it's like, uh, the Federation is, like, fighting some crime syndicate. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's, to that's topical and timely. <laughs> like, just some random one where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, the, the feds are fighting mafia. It's like, I don't know, it doesn't fit into this Salvation storyline at all. It's a little bit... It's, I think it's the next uh, next part of it, but the thing that bothers me is just a one-sided CG. I can't fight for the criminals, which uh, bothers me a lot. Yeah, I do I do like the uh, when they give you options, right? You can, you can be the bad guy in the CG and actually have, like, meaningful PvP. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to do a quick bio break um, while, while we wait for this carrier to jump. Um, and then we're gonna scrounge around these last bit of commodities and then and then head into that technology broker and see what we'll see what happens. Although, if you go to technology broker, do you then need to can you buy the shit at that station or do you have to go somewhere else to buy it? I never thought about that. Because I don't think they sell them on the on the mega ship. Uh the, the what? Okay. Um, thinking unformulated thoughts. So I, might, I might just do all this uh, technology brokering at Shinrata. It might make sense there because they'll sell the modules and like the technology brokers don't actually sell the modules. They just unlock the ability to buy them, but you can't necessarily always buy them from the same place where you can unlock them. I think you can. Okay, I know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, in which case, we're gonna do a buy break. <laughs> and yeah, feel free to ride. I'll be back. See you shortly. Bye. Bye.
Looking for something, Commander? All right, I'm back. I'm back. Hello, hello. I'm gonna take a little break. What rioting happened here? Oh, Zakao's here. How you doing, Zakao? And Eddie, we're just about to do some Thargy stuff. Well, so we have to get uh, thingies first, like microwave cooling hoses or whatever. And the engineer is beta. They needed fish. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they needed. That was just like a test commodity or whatever. I wish that that had become canon. Like there was a fish, the friend, the friendship fish drive. Where's uh, Nanya Biz? <laughs> He's all about the fish. Um, should be three running right now. And yeah, three community goals. You have five like a dozen times and finally open the page. Was it glitching out on you? And then you're checking the mission boards for microwave cooling hoses. You don't trust no carrier market. I know, every time I try, I'm like, oh yeah, I found some materials in a carrier. Oh, it's restricted to squadron access only. Damn it. Uh, how many do you need? need the micro microwaves? Uh, I think 10. Oh, I got a core mission with 14 in reward here, so... Oh, nice! Uh, I got you. Where did you get them? Uh, mission reward. Oh, did you already jump back? You jumped ahead? Yeah, uh, super jumper rasp. Oh, nice. It's like seven jumps. What are you, at a 70 jump, your jump range? Uh, 79, I think. Oof. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, with the super engineered slice 5 FSD. <laughs> the bartender... FSD. The bartender is getting super weirded out by the the green-haired guy. <laughs> That's true, I was just staring at the bartender. Or should you say 08? 07 Dark Heavy 8. Yeah, oh, he's DH8, so... He's got an 8 in his name. So 08 might make more sense than 07. Because DH7, DH8... DH9. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Man, the lags. What lags? Are you getting lags on the stream? Let me know if the stream is lagging. Sometimes I'm unaware of this. I do love this little office. I can't wait till we can actually customize our uh, interiors of the carriers more. Alright, time to sit in the chair. I always get a little paranoid that uh, I don't want to get left behind because you can, if you sit down or get up from the chair at the exact moment, uh, you can get left behind by the carrier and stuck in space. What would happen out here in the Guardian sites? Like, if I logged back in, there's no escape pod. Like, I guess if you die, you just respawn on your carrier. No idea. Stream is fine for you, Eddie? Okay, that's good. Yeah, so I wish I was at LipCon. I'm look. I was looking um, during the bio break. I was just going through the Twitter feeds, and I'm seeing like Takoso and, and um, uh, Zulu Romeo, the, the the guy. If you ever go to Sagittarius A, the guy who tagged Sagittarius A first, he got the discovery tag on it. He's um, a legend. Yeah. Yeah, he's a legend in the community. I got to meet him in 2019. So seeing Takoso with him and Psykit, I'm just like watching all these cool selfies of commanders meeting each other and very. Uh, wish I could be there. Maybe I'll go uh, next year. I'll plan a trip around it. And uh, I'll dress up as cosplay of a spatula. I'll get like a green curly wig. That could be fun. And the mustache. I should do the... the yeah. <laughs> right now spatula doesn't have a mustache on its hollow me, but I should bring back the mustache. That was a good era. I was trying to change up the hollow me slightly. I remember on the Deep Space Dangus I had like the, the beard and everything. The Explorer beard. 
Your network is being throttled hard. You can't even watch live on YouTube. Oh no. That sucks, Sicko. Hope your internet issues are permanently solved in the future. Your internet is unstable, though. It turns on and off. Well, hey, my, mine does that all the time. And then there was this, I don't know if you saw this, but in, like, Canada, there was this big outage where, like, half of Canada lost internet on, like, one provider for, for almost an entire day. And I was going to stream that day. And I go, I wake up, and I'm like, oh, the stream is lagging about 20 seconds. Well, yeah, I think there is, like, a on YouTube, there's a built-in lag of, like, 20 seconds um, that you can't get rid of. I've tried to get rid of it. Um, Twitch is better there because it will... Um, uh, it is like near instantaneous. Like Twitch is like a five second delay. YouTube has an option to like extend that delay by another 60 seconds. I'm like, I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> I guess that's what, in case you say something inappropriate and they need to immediately end the stream and cut it. I don't know. I should dye my hair. I don't know about that, man. I used to have blue hair. I did dye my hair like green once in high school and then blue once like post college. I think blue hair was pretty cool, but I don't know. I'm at that age where I'm like, I worry that if I dye my hair, it'll start falling out. <laughs> oh, it's we're, very in. Uh, we're hip to do it now. Blue and green. Yeah, man. Or blue I, or I, green. I, having blue hair, I got the nickname Thrill House. When I would wear these fake glasses. Like, you look like Mil Millpool. <laughs> it was fun, though. Yeah, way to go, Rogers. Stupid Rogers. It is annoying, these, these stupid telecom monopolies, right? And it's like, everything is depending on them. I do have a green wig, it's just not curly. I need to find a curly one. That's like, good quality. But that, that would be fun. I, I don't know, like... Do people... Do, have people tried to build an elite dangerous spacesuit? Would that be hard, do you think? I know people have done the commander helmet. Which is pretty cool. I can see someone like Mini. Mini doesn't, doesn't like to, to show his face. I've seen him Photoshop the helmet onto him in pictures. But if you could actually build a commander helmet, that'd be pretty cool. You could probably build one out of a motorcycle helmet. It would probably be expensive, though. I would want to go with a cheaper version. Are we, like, off center from the cloud? I think we are. Okay. So, Phil, you're getting those microwave. What's the mission you have to do for the microwave uh, cooling hoses? Just a courier mission. Oh, courier mission. That's easy. Well, that's fortunate. Yeah, I, I couldn't do like a combat mission in this explore uh, asp. Let me see if I can. I, I might be able to set up a buy order on the carrier and then you can just deliver them there. If it will let me, I don't know. Carrier management. I'm the manager. Excuse me, Mr. Carrier, can I speak to your manager? Uh, okay, how do I do this? Manage market. Micro weave cooling hoses. Yes, I can set up a, a buy order. Well, I'll buy them for a very large amount so that you can make a profit. And I need 10 of them. I'll put the buy order for 20, what the heck. If anyone else wants to sell some microwave cooling hoses, the Danga bus is open for business. Um, there's a thing called Foamcraft, aka using EVA foam sheets to make armors. Oh, that would, that would honestly be much better anyway, because then it wouldn't be heavy, right? That's that's cool. I'm not much of a, like, a crafty guy, but um, that could be an interesting project. I'd have a year to work on it. But I'd love to do, like, uh, elite cosplay. Someone should dress up like Ramtop. Uh, speaking of in real uh, IRL, IR, IR, ED stuff, a guy made a fleet carrier in 3D and found it very cool. Yeah, so I was seeing at LaveCon, they have these, like... So LaveCon is a big charity event, I think it uh, helps, like, special effect. Um, and there's, like, some sort of auction for a bunch of models that a guy made of, of Elite ships, including a Thargoid one. Uh, and they look super freaking cool. Uh, as well as, um, if you know Beetlejude, Beetlejude is an artist who does some really freaking awesome uh, Elite artwork. And um, she's doing, as well, a, a raffle that's in support of charity. But really cool. Okay, I need to go to Tashi Station. How many jumps away is that? Oh, yeah, there you go. Jackson, parking by Jackson's Lighthouse is a huge advantage. It's two jumps. <laughs> Gotta love those neutron stars. Wow. I guess what neutron stars, they triple your jump range? Mm, yeah. And then white dwarfs do uh, like double, but they're difficult to work with. 
No, I don't know how much, but yeah. Less than Newton stars. What's the sense of that? I guess, like, uh, maybe they're trying to model it off of real science. Because, you know, we normally use stars to boost our jump ranges. Oh, did you see the uh, the first image from the, uh, the James Webb Telescope? Uh, I did. It's been all over the internet lately, and um, it looks pretty cool. I zoomed in on it a lot and just kind of scanned it. And the, the amazing part is that little image, it's like, it's the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. It really makes you go, whoa. And I saw a video of someone like comparing it to the Hubble uh, deep field. And it's like, yeah, that resolution is much better. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff to see. And I wonder um, how long it's gonna take for uh, an elite dangerous scientist to visit all those stars in the photo. Although I guess a lot of them are distant galaxies. Unfortunately, right now, we only have the Milky Way. The one day, maybe they'll, maybe they'll add other galaxies. Oop, nope, we need a little bit more. Not quite supercharged. Wait, where'd that star go? Oh, there it is. Okay, careful now. I wish you could get a gun that looks like this. Fire the uh, the neutron gun from your ship. It shoots like neutron jet cones. That would actually be really cool. So you can boost the jetpack range. Oh my god. <laughs> Super supercharge your jetpack. Can you imagine though if they added the ability where you have like an FSD in your suit? You have a jumpsuit. You could just jump from system to system. You could jump like 10 light years on your own without a ship. <laughs> oh, it looks like a crate. Oh, it looks like a crate. You wonder what caused the distortions. You mean for like the Rogers distortions? I don't know. A lot of people think, I, I think they said it was something about like, we updated the firmware and like, blah, 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 redundancies. Okay, hold on. Where do I have to go here? Uh, Uno momento. Uh, Whitson Hub. Alright, we're looking for a Whitson Hub. I think it's probably ground-based. Oh my god, there's so much here. Oh, that's- okay, that's a fleet carrier. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Okay. Let me just take off fleet carriers for a quick moment. Unclutter this. There we go, Whitson Hub. Found it. Alright, so what do I need for this? I, and I'm probably going to buy extra because, to be honest, it's like these are uh, annoying things to have to come by. Power converters. And I need two of them, so I'll buy eight. Uh, the James Webb Telescope looks like a crate. Yeah, it gets a little bit, eh? You know what would be a cool project would be to try and get, like, um, like a, a model of a Thargoid out there in space in orbit. Just put a little Thargoid model. You know, just like a, a five foot wide sort of Thargoid. Have it orbit up there as an Easter egg for people with telescopes. Find the orbiting Thargoid. Yeah, the Brabus should do that. Like uh, the Elon Musk put a car up there, he should put a Thargoid up there. Maybe. Exactly. It can't be that expensive. <laughs> I think it's like, what is it, like $10,000 per per ton? Or, or like, t sort of like, it's like a million dollars per per uh, uh, kilogram to send something into space or whatever. Uh, gravitational lensing is a foreground, is of the foreground galaxy bending the light of the background galaxies. Oh yeah, the, the, so the distortions in the James Webb, yeah, it's all like, um, it's gravity, man. And I guess it's a huge time lapse as well. So there might be some time-lapse stuff going on. But yeah, that's the first thing I looked at was like, ooh, that galaxy looks like stretched out, like it's getting eaten by a black hole. But no, that's just weird photography. Because I think it's like they take that image over like 16 hours or something, right? It's like piecing together what ultimately is like a grain of sand in the sky. And it's like you see that far and then there's just galaxies as far as the eye can see. Some of them look cool, I would visit them. We also, a friend of mine got me this game called Chorus. Have you ever heard of Chorus, Phil? Mm, no. 
it's a cool little, uh, it's like a space arcade game. It's kind of open world, but like think of it like, um, at least as far as I've played, it's all in like an asteroid belt, and there's like a whole bunch of different places you can visit. Um, what I really like about it, though, is uh, um, unlike Elite, like like the flight model is a little bit automated. Like you go close to a wall, and your character, who's like this ace space pilot, will actually dodge out of the way uh, of the wall. And so it actually, like, as you're playing it, you're like doing these weaves in between station beams and just like pulling it off perfectly. And you really feel like a, an ace space pilot. It's a very arcadey game compared to Elite. I'm thinking about, I might stream it on Twitch. I might do a little stream of it. It is a space game. And I love me my space games. All right, coming into dock. Let's see here, 31. Oh, of course, it's right there. I hate when you get the landing pads that are right below the, uh, the mail slot. And boop, boop. Okay, give me the good stuff. So first of all, let's just make sure I got rid of all my limpets. Uh, do do do. Oh, I don't have any limpets. Wait, why do I only have four cargo space? Do I still have those guardian things on me? I forgot to put them on a carrier, didn't I? That's fine. I only need two of these things, so I'll just grab four. Uh, what am I looking for? Power converters. Yeah, what do I have? Probably have Guardian Relics Orb. Oh, and a casket. I guess I could, like, hand that in as a token for the, uh, the CG. Okay, so I have what I need. Now I need to go back to the fleet carrier. And then, Phil, you've got your microweaves? Mm, no, you had them on your carrier. Oh, did you already put them there? You're already done? Mm, yes. Oh yes. my god, you're quick. Okay, so there'll be a few jumps back. So actually, while that is... While I'm jumping back, I might as well jump the carrier. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes to get back. Uh, do any of you know why the telescope is placed a million mi miles away from Earth? Well, I think, it, it, number one, I think it's in a Lagrange point. Um, but I think it's just, like, to avoid, like, the light pollution and gravity distortions. I could be just bullshitting that answer, but... I think I read something about that. That it's, like, in a Lagrange point, it's, like, clearer visions. You know, like, the, the gravity uh, and debris around Earth. Because Earth is getting pretty cluttered up. I was up uh, north for a bit, um, not really that far north, but a five hour drive or whatever. Um, and it was cool, I looked up in the night sky and you actually see like, oh my god, there's a lot of stars and, like when you're in a city. And uh, I saw um, uh, two satellites, which you can tell because they're moving quite high up, but they look like little moving stars and it's like, wow, okay, that's a lot of them for like a five minute observation. Like, there's got to be just, like, tons and tons of little satellites up there. I think it's cool that we can see them from the ground with our naked eyes. And, and why do you see them? Do they have lights, or is it just a reflection from the, the sun? Yeah, I think it's just the sun reflecting off the bright, shiny satellite. So you can make a stealth satellite by just making it, like, black or oh, something? Oh, I'm sure they have those as well. <laughs> But you can't see them. I think they worry about uh, cell satellites. Like that could be. You could have a sat. Like, have you seen the movie Goldeneye? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I had a the Nintendo 64 game. Yeah, I love that. That game and that movie. That's one of my favorite Bond movies. And like, just so many great memories of being odd job in multiplayer, and doing slap only one hit kill. People getting very frustrated because <laughs> yeah. you can't slap out. <laughs> you can't look down. I'm pretty sure someone remade Goldeneye for the PC. Like, there's a modern remake of Goldeneye that I think is free. Yeah, probably. I need to look into that. I I, I would um, be interested in playing that again for a little bit, just for nostalgia purposes. Well, Eddie, you went to the northwest part of Europe two days ago. What is north and west? That would be like, like Amsterdam, Denmark. Or like the Englands? Do, do we count? Do we still count Britain as part of England or part of um, part of Europe? Because they Brexited. 
Nah, it's Europe. I would love to go to Amsterdam again. Amsterdam is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been through. I just, I went and, and got some of that, um, you know, Putzaruski stuff that you smoke and get high with. <laughs> and then literally just rented a bike and uh, went around to like old parks and stuff like that. And it was just such a pleasant experience. Though, um, it was a little bit scary because like people who bike every day in Amsterdam, oh yeah, they're used to it. They're good with it. Um, me who was like, you know, kind of an, uh, you know, like not a regular city biker, just jumping on a bike, especially while under the influence of, of Amsterdamian uh, culture. It was a little scary. Uh, Norway, Iceland. Iceland is awesome. I've been to Iceland twice. The most north part of Europe. So what, like Finland, Norway, that kind of area? The Scandinavians? In Sweden? How's the weather there in Sweden? Uh, pretty good. I live here in the very most southernmost part of Sweden, so it's kind of like yeah, continental weather. I know there's, there's like a heat wave warm in here. England. Are you getting a heat wave too? Uh, yeah, kind of. It's not too bad now. It's it's, it's nice and warm, but it was uh, hotter like two weeks ago. Uh, it's still good weather here. The most yeah, the most northern parts of Europe. I would like to go. I would like to go. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah, you want to try weed sometime too, but yeah, where you're from, having weed would land you in like 30 years behind bars. Yeah, it's like, I have a buddy who's moving to like, uh, wants to, well, wants to move to Thailand. He went there for a month, and he's like, yeah, like, you get arrested for smoking weed there. And I'm like, I can't move from like, a, like, like Canada and like Amsterdam and a lot of the United States now. It's all, it's all legalized. And just to, to think that there are countries that you can go to where, yeah, like it's a jailable offense now. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. At least alcohol is pretty, pretty unanimous. There's a lot, there are countries where you can't get alcohol, but... It's definitely, uh, the legalization of weed in Canada was an interesting era. And now it's like, uh, you walk into a store and there's a guy with an iPad and he's like, Hey, uh, what can I help you with? Here's our menu of like 32 pages. It's kind of crazy. But Amsterdam takes it to the next level. Like, everything's legal in Amsterdam. Not, well, not everything, but a lot more. I didn't uh, want to go that far, because, you know, it's like... A couple, couple, couple days before LaveCon is when I went, and this is back in 2019. And I'm like, I don't want to, like, miss LaveCon, because I, like, woke up in Poland or something, right? <laughs> it's like, do some mushrooms or something like that, and then just, like, next thing you wake up and you're in the middle of, uh middle of Berlin. How did I get here? But it was nice. I went to the Van Gogh Museum in uh, Amsterdam. And uh, it's really cool. I've, se I've seen like Van Gogh paintings before. All his famous ones are in the MoMA in New York. Oh shoot, I didn't jump my carrier, did I? I forgot. Okay. Um, we want to get close to the HIPs. One moment, please. Okay, yeah, somewhere around here. Although, where is the actual community goal? You don't see the community goal icon here. Is it because I have it off? Dry dock markers. No, it should be showing community goals. Hmm, I see it. I guess so they, I these are like should... hidden ones? Are these hidden community goals? No, no, I, I see it. Uh, it's maybe in your filters. It uh, should be marked on in my filters, it's just not showing up. There's one in Andu, Andu, Wati, uh, system. So let's see, can I see that one? It's close to Laxac. Yeah, so I can see that one, but I don't see the, uh, I don't see the CGs for Salvation. Like, they must be hidden CGs. Secret CGs. All right, that should work. No free slots, damn it. Uh, okay, we will try another. I also don't see the one in HIP. Yeah, I think that's like, because uh, they have the ability to like not have some, uh, like some of the, the, the CGs or whatever don't um, show up on the galaxy map. They're quote unquote secret. 
Okay, can I go here? Don't look like that many fleekers. No, no free slots. How dare you? All right, fine. We'll go a little bit further away. It's fine. I think we might. I might have to jump to a rope or something. Hold on. Where is Shinra Tra? That's over there. No, that's too far away. All right, fine. We'll just go there. Good enough. There you go. Jump successful. So I did see there is a tech so this arm I'm, I'm debating I'm like well hold on hold on maybe what I should do is I'll jump the carrier there and then while that's going I'll detour to Shinrata and back yeah that's what I'll do oh this is so annoying that you, you can't access your inventory anymore um, from your uh, little side button or whatever Uh, or sorry, when you when you're in the menu, you're not allowed to access your your ship menus when you're in this menu, which I think they acknowledged is actually that that is kind of a, a glitch or an unintended thing. Um, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, I need to go to outfitting. I need more cargo. Because I believe Shinrata has the. Um... Oh, now that I think about it, I actually need to be in my Xeno ship. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. My Xeno ship is my lovely crate. The Dengutron 9000. I will store um, some of my modules on the Denga bus. So that'll jump there with those, and I can reattach them. And I'll just put some extra cargo space on this. Weed in Switzerland is very bad. <laughs> I can imagine. It's it's very neutral. Uh, and as you can see, the HUD changes. I love this HUD mod. Okay, so I'm replacing these shard cannons, so let me just store these on the Danga bus. It's the large uh, plasma accelerators that I want to try. They seem like fun. And they also look very pretty. Okay, storing, storing, storing. Max number of modules stored. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. What have I done? I maxed up my space. Hey, what up, Rainbobula? How you doing? Damn it, HUD. Uh, okay, so what can I. I guess. I hate to do this, but I probably don't need to have, like, auto docking computers. Hold on, where is it? What are they called? Flight assists. I can get rid of these. I keep them on there just in case, you know, it's like, hey, maybe I want to have a docking computer on hand. Unfortunately, yeah, it's like I've hit my storage module uh, limit. I won't, I refuse to sell anything that's engineered. That should be okay. So then store this. And then as long as I have uh, enough cargo space. So I need 10 of the one thing. So maybe, okay, what I'll do is I'll store hull reinforcement and replace that with cargo rackies. There you go. That's what I need. Okay, we should be good. And we still have a jump range of what? 25. That's pretty low. Hold on. Can, do we have a... A guardian boosty boosty thing. We do. Uh, three. Okay. Equip module. And let's throw. Oh, we already have one on the ship. Or wait, no, we don't. Okay. So do that. Swap it in. And there we go. Jump range at thirty-two. Much more acceptable. Okay. And now we need to bring all the all over that um, stuff. Damn it, HUD. Okay. There we go. So I've got the two power converters, now I need those, uh, what are they called? HN microweave cooling hoses. I need ten of them. That should do it. Okay. I don't have to bring, like, Guardian stuff. Like, that's all materials, right? Uh, yes. I should be fine. 
Okay. So let's take a little visit right. to Jameson. Hopefully no one kills me on the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say that. I mean, it's only Shinrata Desra. No one ever dies in Shinrata Desra. It's the safest system. Watch Tony Curtis be there. I was in an instance with him the other day. Though didn't actually uh, get ganked by him. Uh, use Salvation Plasma Accelerators, they are OP. The Salvation ones? What's the difference? Will I be able to unlock them at um, Shinrata? No, you buy them at the Bright Sentinel, I think. I don't have any of those, but they're like overcharged engineer, I think, or something. Well, hold on a second, hold on a second. The Guardian Plasma... Tr oh, okay, hold on. So... Ooh, hold on. Because, yeah, I've been looking at the fixed large, but there is a Guardian Plasma Charger turreted large. What are, what are these ones called? Uh, I don't know. Like, should I maybe go to... Maybe I should stay with the carrier and go unlock them at the Bright Sentinel. I don't even think it's the same unlock materials. I have no idea. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm at a crossroads now. You have to go, your internet isn't working properly? Oh, sorry, dude. Okay, then what about articulation motors? If I bring those as well... Where can I find those? Articulation motors... Oh no, I can't find those anywhere. So that must be another mission item. Okay, I think I'm gonna just unlock the ones that I've got. Oh, but hold on. If there is like a salvation, hold on, salvation, plasma, weapon. Uh, do, 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 do. So to get the class three fixed, I would need, no, 10 microwave cooling hoses. So maybe I should just go with the carrier then. Am I sure? Am I sure that like okay? If I, you can buy them from the Bright Sentinel, or you can unlock them at the Bright Sentinel. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And then we can get to some Thargoid combat, which I I am really enjoying that aspect of of the game. I think it is really cool and polished. <coughs> I like that there's like that strategy of like you have to exert the hearts and shoot the hearts. Better be able to dock before this thing locks itself off. That was good that I checked. Thank you for that, Eddie. If there is a, a pre-engineered version, like that's just probably better to unlock. Okay, let me see here. I'm just reading on this. So unlocking the different plasma charger can be permanently unlocked by providing the following materials. It seems like it may be just any technology broker, though. Uh, hold on. Lead dangerous, bright, sentinel, uh, un uh, modules. Okay, so it does have outfitting. I don't know. Well, I, I suppose, uh, I believe Marope, Alcazar's Hope in Marope is also a place where you can get Guardian stuff. So if anything, I... Oh, uh, Dark Heavy's on the Bright Central right now. Dark Heavy, can you check to see if, if um, I don't know if you have these things unlocked, but can you buy, uh, can you go into outfitting and get Guardian weapons? How long to the carrier's jumps? Uh, six minutes, okay. Alright, well I might as well just stay with the carrier. Save me some time jumping. I'm not gonna spend my jump down in the... in the... dirty, dirty hangar. Yes, you can. Okay, wonderful. Okay. 
Although I'm like, the odds of me getting ganked in that system feel a little bit higher than Shinrata. <laughs> Just because it's the CG, right? Although, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the CG for killing Thargoids, you, I don't think you hand it in in that system. There's like some nearby system. Yeah. Which is interesting. Have they unpermit locked that ground planet? I wonder what that mm, no. I wonder what's down there. I'm just gonna sit here. No, 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 don't get up. Alright, five minutes to jump. That's fine. So yeah, hopefully at the at the Bright Sentinel, then I can get those, uh, like, if there are pre-engineered Guardian stuff, like, that is just better in every way. Hmm, but unless you pay for each. Yeah, I think that's the, that's always the problem with, with the technology brokers, is that, like, you have to unlock each blueprint, and they have such high requirements across each one. And it's like you have to unlock was, each size too, like size one, size two, size three, right? Uh, that was um, no, I mean like uh, with the uh, pre-engineered FSDs, for example, you had to pay the price for each, uh, each one. Like if you wanted more than one unit of those no. FSDs, you had to buy the. I don't mm. know if it's the same here or not. I think I think you just unlock them and then you can buy as many as you want, right? I think that's how. Let's works. hope. I hope so. Uh, nothing, that's why it's locked. I bet that FDev didn't want to model the weapon. Because, like, I assume that's where the Proteus Cannon is. It's somewhere on the planet, right? I mean, well, here's the thing. If the Burrs are correct and Update 13 is around the corner, like, they're assuming that, okay, this this Community Gold, there's language in it which says, like, okay, this is going to be a two-week-long thing, and then, you know, Salvation's going to fire the Proteus Cannon. And if there's an update that coincides with that, we could very well get um, a ground-based Proteus cannon where Thargoids are invading on foot. Or maybe just, a, you know, uh, air-based Thargoids are attacking the weapon. Who knows? I mean, again, I, 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 when it comes to Frontier and stuff that they haven't announced that they're doing, I would temper your expectations. And, you know, even if it's something cool that they put in there for the first time, It'll be glitched. <laughs> people will... People... Instances will die. Disconnects will be born. But, uh... I'd still go for that. And have some something new to do. Th third grade ground combat, I think, is like... One of the most expected and anticipated things in the game right now. That seems, like, realistic. Though I can just picture future videos of Thargoids being, uh... uh clipped on crates and just stuck... <laughs> Oh, let's see if it takes me back to my pilot seat. Okay, wait. It's after 2.30. I should have been escorted to my seat at this point, right? Can I get up? Oh wow, I can't get up. So you are allowed to sit in your passenger seat on your own carrier. That's interesting. Okay, let's correct that too. Didn't want to model it under construction. That's true. Yeah, maybe, maybe like there's a final asset, but they didn't want to be like, oh yeah, well... We'll have like a different every every week you can see the progress of like the girders being built like that would be a lot of work and only would ever be able to be used once unless we could like build your own proteus cannon here's the the proteus cannon uh self-assembly kit comes with ikea instructions materials not included that would be kind of neat though if you could build your own proteus cannon on your fleet carrier you bring it to whatever system, and then, like, slowly over time, uh, the Thorgoids will attack you, but you'll kill them. No, let's be real. Like, they're never gonna have fleet carrier combat, which I, I don't know. I would love to see that. It doesn't seem like it's in the cards, though. Alright, here we go. Less than a minute to jump. But yeah, let's see, um, I did see there was a Reddit thread on LaveCon while we wait to jump. Let's see here. Uh, so I guess, yeah, they did their frameshift live thing at there. And what was weird is I thought they were going to do it on the official channels, but they ended up not doing it. They did it on, like, the LaveCon, or, um, Lave Radio. So I didn't see them post anything to their official channels. 
do do do. But it was interesting that there were there were a bunch of devs, and they actually did um, the, the interesting discussions. Nothing nothing revealed, but um, I, I did appreciate watching it. Uh, and yeah, there were no Twitch drops on the on the stream as it was on Live Radio, but um, they said that next Frameshift Live, they're going to do a pretty cool Twitch Twitch drop and apparently make it very very easy um, uh, to get. So stay tuned for the next Frontier stream on Twitch. Uh, I certainly always go for those drops. Even if I just put the stream on in the background and mute it, <laughs> I want them drops. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything legendary. But you know, that, that LabeCon isn't necessarily, like, like I said, it's not a Frontier event. It's more about a community event and getting to meet other people who are in the universe and that also, uh, <coughs> you know, care about Elite. Because I don't know about you guys, but it's like outside of elite people, it's like, I can't talk about Elite to someone who doesn't play Elite. Have you ever tried this, Phil? Have you ever tried to talk to Elite about a, fr to a, fr a friend or something that has no idea what Elite is? No, I've never tried it, though. It doesn't last long. <laughs> Indeed. So this is a game where you jump around and look at stuff and uh, you refuel your ship. But it's like, you can talk about, like, someone else who plays Elite, you can talk about Elite for hours. You can spend an entire day talking about this game. Outside of commanders in the know, someone who's not a commander, just like a, what's the, what's like the muggle equivalent of people who don't play Elite? Are they NPCs? Like, if you don't play NPC, if you're not a wizard, you're an NPC. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so now I head to the ship. This is a time-consuming process, as, as with any ground. I think I'll just wait for my carrier. I don't want to go in my ASP uh, in that system. True. It's a good, wise move. It's here in six minutes, so... What 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 do you have on my carrier? I saw a ship splash up there. That wasn't my own. Oh, on your carrier? Yeah, something was here. Uh, nothing. I'm just here. Me, me I'm just here in my ass explorer in your own carrier. Are you on my carrier? Uh, yeah, well, I went for the jump. So wait, you're waiting on the asp to get delivered to my carrier? N no, I'm on your carrier waiting for my carrier to arrive. <laughs> Oh, okay, hold on. Because I'm like, I'm like, there is another ship on this carrier. If I go to the elevator... Oh, now it's gone. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've undocked the launched, so... Oh, oh, okay. But yeah, my, my ship was there, yeah. I was docked in the carrier. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I always talk to people, uh, things they don't understand, like the leader anime. They just listen silently for hours. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like I, the, a couple of friends of mine do a lot of horror streaming. Um, they, we play, like, Dead by Daylight on their channels. And it's like, they're like, and, and Spatula here streams, uh, what is it, you play Elite? And it's like, try explaining Elite to, like, a horror um, audience. It's like, uh, it's a space game where you go in space and do things in space. It's a lot of fun. Is that a game where you're, like, a zombie and you turn out these machines for some reason? What? The Dead by Daylight, whatever you call it. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh... It's like, um, there's like two teams, the survivors and the killers. And so like the killer could be like Michael Myers or one of their original character, like Freddy Krueger is in there. Like they have a whole bunch of uh, different killers, the girl from the ring. And um, the survivors basically are on the map with the killer and they have to power up these generators to open up the exit. Meanwhile, the killer yeah. stalks them. It's a pretty fun little <laughs> game. Yeah, I've I've seen the game stream. There's a there's a bar in in Malmo here, a, a gamer bar. <laughs> it's a rare thing. I've never been to a gamer bar before, but they have all these screens everywhere we were with the streams, and we saw this, this game we play there. Uh, it's fun. I like games that can a, get get your adrenaline going. Uh, with horror, a weird horror games. A, a very bearded man was playing it, and he wasn't talking at all. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I find it like I, I tune into like some random streamers sometimes, and I'm like, yeah, they're not, they're not even, uh, they're not saying anything. And I get like, yeah, some people got to do breaks. Like some of them I tune into my stream during a bio break and be like, man, this is lame. This guy's just sitting at the bar, taking a piss, and then they're gone. Unsubscribe. 
But uh, you know, it's it, it's like when you're when you're streaming. It's like I, I hate dead silence. I hate dead silence streamers. I don't hate them, but you know, I don't take it personally. But I find it uninteresting to watch. I want some narration. Tell me what you're thinking. What are you going through? Uh, and Zakao saying, uh, you try to talk to someone on wild ones, and only three sentences they shut me down. They asked me, if you kill a dude, can you loot his stuff? Tell them, tell them ED is like a rowing boat on stream, catching shrimps and crayfish, but in space. Yeah, it'd be like that. Okay, now I don't want to die here, because there are a lot of people. And, like, none of them are triangular. But their names, there's a lot of them. Oh, please don't kill me. I mean, at least I'm not in a Type 9. Type 9, I would be very nervous. Because you cannot even avoid interdictions in that. Horror games are boring. Well, I suppose it depends on the game. I like the horror games that have, like, teamwork components to them. So that you're kind of experiencing with other people. You have a weak heart. Avoid all things remotely close to horror. I'm a big horror junkie. I, I, like, horror and sci-fi are my favorites. And when they come together in, like, a dead space or, like, Event Horizon, the movie, um, that's my sweet spot where I'm like, I love horror that is set in space. Cosmic horror. Things like, um, what was that movie with Dennis Quaid? Pandorica? Or Pandora, I think it was. I don't know, but there's also Event Horizon. Yeah. Event Horizon, um, I remember seeing that the first time, and I was just, my mind was blown. I was like, this is amazing. There's the other one, uh, Sunshine, with uh, the Danny Boyle film. That's another one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got that one. On the DVD. And streaming, streaming horror games uh, can be, I think, fun and interesting. Because there's a lot of uh, uh, fun stuff that can happen in them. I was thinking about... Um, and honestly, I don't want to play this game because, like... When it comes to certain horror games, like I, am, I do get really freaking cowardly. Um, Alien Isolation is a game that, like, I really want to play. It's horror, it's sci-fi, it's alien. Um, but it looks like I, I would be actually terrified to play it. <laughs> I may do it eventually. I, rem I remember the Alien vs. Predator game. I could not play the human uh, campaign because of the, the damn face hugger. I oh, yeah. hate them. Oh, yeah. Oh, terrible. Oh. You hate oh, cheap jump scares it. and fake bloods that come. See, yeah, I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind gore. I, I, I love gore. Uh, when it comes to cheap jump scares, I do agree with you. I don't like the cheap ones. But uh, you know, I, I, I don't mind ha having the, the old pumper, the old ticker start moving occasionally with a with a little bit of a freak out. You prefer the expensive ones. I prefer oh, expensive, ones. exactly expensive jump scares. Ones that really hit you uh, when you aren't expecting them. I'm a little bit nervous. There's so many hollow dots around. It looks like they are not. They are all ignoring me. As they would. The Dengatron 9000 is a very intimidating ship. Yeah, so I, I think, uh, depending on how the salvation stuff goes, I was also thinking, I was debating to do this for this stream, was to finally get an FDL. Now that I have a cool uh, skin for it, a salvation skin. But I'm like, I don't know, not yet. Yeah. It requires a lot of engineering. <laughs> I've never agreed with that ship. It's supposed to be a good one, but I don't know how to play it. I've never flown it. I think they're beautiful. I think they're beautiful it ships. Is, it is fun to fly, but I just... It's too specialized. You can only do like one thing and... I don't know, there are other combat chips I prefer. But it is, it is a good chip, uh, I guess. But I just haven't found my way to use it. Yeah. Problem is I don't have them uh, prismatic shields because that is a power play grind. Oh no! Please don't tell me someone's pad blocking. Uh oh. Yeah, this is unmanned. Oh, there's Dark Eight. Uh, unmanned, so I guess unmanned. they're disembarked. So okay, where is the um, the concourse on this? Can I target Dark Heavy from here? No. Where is the concourse? I want to go smash against the window. Ooh, a Type 10. Yeah, that's the one thing is like Odyssey put in these space legs, but when it comes to like docking with a mega ship, um, 
yeah, it's like, uh, can I have that pad, please? <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll be easier to find with night vision. Oh god, yeah, the night vision on this ship is so much better. With the bright green. It looks cool, too. Alright, looking for concourse. I should try to request docking again. Request denied. Now, we, we found this the other time where it's like, yeah, there are people who are uh, pad blocking at the CG as part of a roleplay effort, which I think is pretty funny. Maybe that's what Dark Heavy's doing, he's roleplaying uh, anti-salvation. Where is that concourse? They can be quite hard to find. Yeah, that's one of many reasons to not play in open, or why the game is unoptimized in open, let's say. Yeah, I mean, I still like, uh... Oh, hold on, this might be the concourse. Is this the concourse? Nope, that's, uh, that's a pad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, 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 this is, like, something that they need to figure out. Like, I think it should be, like, if the pad is full, you just get, you know, slid it. You, maybe, like, you have, like, a, a limit of five minutes, and then, uh... It shuffles you into the underbelly of the station. I mean, the, the game wants to, you know, instance you with other commanders because it's a multiplayer game, but in the situation with stations, it's kind of counterproductive, you know? Yeah. Because you can, <laughs> you, you can uh, not force a clean uh, instance to be created for you because the game wants to multiplayer you with other commanders. This is true. Okay, actually, uh, it's, it's, someone's unlocking it's, here. It's good in like some situations, but it's bad in this situation. But the game can't really tell the situations apart. Here we go. There's a free pad. We got Commander Rubizal here, undocking. I just gotta get in before someone else gets this. Come on. Oh, there we go! And it's pad 07. How perfect is that? Oh wait, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? There's an easy way to do this. Uh, do do do. There we go. Easy now, easy. This, I'm a professional pilot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, the game where the humans are boring, the predator is fine because he has thermal vision. Oh, for sure. I, who would want to be a human? To be honest, the, the, the NV green border thing reminds me of the AVP game on um, SFC? What's SFC? I don't know what that is. Alright, um... So, first tech broker. Technological broker. So what was I doing here? Um, okay, so we have modified shard cannon. Is that what I was doing? Modified, modified something. Modified Guardian Shard Cannon comes with increased range, reduced spread, and high penetration, but has additional mass power draw and thermal load. That's fine. Let's do it. Unlock it. Uh, there we go. We are, we are completing our personal narrative. Uh, so please, is it unlocked, or do you buy one module? Please do not read it. So now, it, now it's unlocked. So now I think you have to buy it. Um, and what's the other one I wanted? This Ghost Cannon? No, it's the plasma charger. Now, is that modified? Is there a modified plasma charger? Oh, there is. Oh, but it only goes up to class two, and I need power transfer buses for it. Uh, okay. But I do want the size three guardian plasma charger. Yeah, I think that's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Fixed. It's been fixed, so it can't breathe. Oh, and I only needed nine microwave cooling hoses. I brought ten. Alright, let's unlock that. Whee! Okay, can I unlock anything else? Oh, apparently I could. This plasma charger? But wait, that's not what I want. What I want is, like, 
this one. I mean, I suppose I could get the size one, but wait, what? I don't even have class one thingies on my ship. Hold on, what else do I have in my cargo here? One microweave cooling hose. <laughs> make sure you get the size you want. I think I got that. Okay, let me go to outfitting. <clears throat> Let's just make sure. Because I am... Uh, my attention span is terrible. Oh, Super Nintendo. Super Famicom. Is that Was that like the name of Nintendo? Super Famicom? That sounds cool. <laughs> Superfam.com. Okay. So, experimental. And hold on a second, what? Oh no. I think you're right, Phil. I think so too. And it wasn't even the right thing. I got a shard cannon. Mm hmm. Did I unlock the wrong thing? Yep. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> All that grind and I just picked the wrong thing at the last minute? Really? Well, that's fun grind. No. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, no. So wait, I but hold on, I'm like looking at like anything, I can't buy anything here that's AX related. The, the short cannon was AX, right? I mean... Well, yeah, but, like, that, like, I guess when I unlock that, that just stored the module, but what I really need is, like, where's the other stuff I unlocked? You can't buy it here, you can only unlock it here. Oh, that's so... That, that's, that's the weird part, because the same thing is about the, um, uh, pre-engineered FSDs. Like, you would go to the tech broker, and you would click unlock, but that doesn't unlock it, it just buys you one module. And then you can unlock it again, and that buys you one module, so it's kind of like an outfitting, but it's called a tech broker. I'm assuming it's the same system here. Well, I've cocked this up now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so I guess I need to go to Marope and like actually buy the, um, the stuff that I wanted. Yeah, actually unlocking the thing. How far is Marope? How many jumps in this ship? Why can't I see anything? There we go. But they didn't you spend the materials now? Uh, the microwave stuff? I did, but I... Okay, like, I spent those on the right thing. I just can't buy that here. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah, like, basically, I unlocked two things. One was the right thing, and... and uh... Okay, well, let me go... Let me first go to the Dangabus, and I'll just put these microwave cooling hoses on there. Uh, where it'd be. That's super annoying. Yeah, that, that's stupid that they do that with these pre-engineered things. Like, they should just unlock it so that you can buy as many as you want. Like, I have to do all that grind again just to get a second one? How dare you, Frontier? How dare you? That is kind of mean. And it doesn't really clearly explain that? Like, I don't know. Nope. It doesn't really seem to, like... Give me like, hey, warning! You're only unlocking one of these. Is that? Are you sure you want to do that? Oh well. Okay. Well, um, on to the next one. So yeah, I guess it'll be. Okay. Well, yeah. First, jump into the dango bus. That's right. I just want to kill some thargoids. After all of that. Uh, yeah, I was looking at some uh, tech brokers on Inara. The closest one is about 231 light years. Except for the Bright Sentinel, of course. Or wait a minute, hold on a second. Now let me think about this. Do you need to be at a tech broker? Like, if, if I've now unlocked them, like, I should be able to buy them anywhere that AX weapons are sold, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or does it need to be a tech broker there specifically? Yeah, yeah, I think you can buy them where there's a tech broker. Hmm. Could you not buy them here? No. Does it have outfitting? Uh, no. Or yes, yes, it does have outfitting, they just don't sell the AX weapons. Then no idea. Which makes no sense, because they're like, oh no! 
No, the Dagobus <laughs> is so far away. Why did the Dagobus park one hundred twenty-eight thousand light seconds? Oh no! Uh, everything is going wrong. Here. So, which one do you want to buy? Huh? Which one do I want to buy? Which was... which guardian thing do you want to buy? Well, I, okay, so I'm pretty sure I just unlocked the um, the regular plasma charger, like size three. That was what I used the microwave cooling hoses on. What I wanted to unlock was the shard, uh, the shard plasma charger. No, I'm so confused. Yeah, I wanted to get the big plasma charger, and I wanted to get the tiny engineered. Um, what do you call? It? Let me see here. The Guardian... Not the Shard Cannon. The Gauss Cannon. No? The Gar... I don't know. Whatever the modified one was. Which is what I got. But that turned out to be the Flak Cannons that I didn't need. <laughs> so, now I probably have to go back to a Guardian site if I want that stuff. It's fine. All of this is why I don't bother with Guardian stuff. This is exactly it, Dark Heavy. It's like that. This is, this is why I don't care about the stupid personal narrative of technology brokers. Like, if each okay, if if you can bring the parts, or alternatively, just do a mission where they give you a random mission. It's like you got to go take down the Red Baron. He's in this asteroid field. When you come back, we'll give you the the the, the goods. And then I do it. But when it becomes like this, like epic fetch quest, it's just super annoying. And then. When everything's so similar, and there's so many things that you have to unlock, and you have to do this for each size of a weapon. That makes no sense to me. Why do you make me do this? Okay, hold on. Um, At least with the old ones, you can just do it once and you have it done forever. And the old ones, weapons are there, they're, they're fine. For, for Targar stuff, you don't need the Salvation versions. Yeah. They're, they're, they're better, maybe, but not essential. Okay, I'm just updating my Inara while we're while we're heading so far because my carrier decided to park super far away. Why? We can go to the we can go to Diago under the system. It's like 250 light years, and they are selling the stuff, and they have a tech broker too. What are they selling? The size three fixed plasma chargers. Oh, well there you go. And, wh and where is that? What, how do you spell that? Can you put that one in the in the YouTube chat? Uh, yes. <laughs> Again, I wish someone had ED team plays. Wow. I mean, I don't know. Like, it, it's even like I do Im imagine that they play, but it's like, do they play this? Do they appreciate the same things? And you gotta keep in mind, like, there is like, you know, okay, there's like newer players who don't even look at this grind and, and don't care about it, right? Uh, hold on, import frontier data. Come on, Anara. And it's, they have to balance the game for like all different playstyles, right? But yeah, it's like when you've been playing this game for three thousand hours. Diagurar, Diagwaran, Diagwarandi. Let's see, where is that? Yeah, EDDB tells me twelve minutes ago that updated and it's selling the plasma chargers, and it also has a tech broker, and it's the closest one to where we are now, so. Why is this not? Two. Is it spelled right there? Do you have Guan? I, I spelled it correctly and the edge did not. He switched ah. to A with the U. A it's the Guandri and not the Gaundri. Oh, that's very close to Bologna's. It's nice to know. It's in the old home area. Yeah, Bologna's actually conveniently close to this uh, uh, CG. We're in, which means, like, you know, if the Thargoids do start invading from that direction, we stand to be in between them and the rest of the bubble. <laughs> but if you've got a good jumper with some size 3 uh, hard points, we can just jump there and buy this stuff with the plasmas if you need them. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw these microwave cooling hoses on the, um, on the Dango bus. Blizzard doesn't know it, too. Uh, you have to disagree. WoW is the best MMO in terms of solo content. See, I've never played WoW, and I feel like at this point, to try and get into that, it would be kind of, like, overwhelming. 
like other than elite, which I don't know if you classify elite as an MMO. I think it's like MMO ish, right? It definitely has that um, appeal to it, right? I don't think it is. No, I wouldn't call it that. But the only other MMO I tried to play was one called Secret Wars or Secret something. It was like a conspiracy theory related one, like you know, like the Illuminati and Egyptian gods and. You know, the, the aliens are abducting people. Like it was kind of. I'm like, oh, that's that's cool. That's up my alley. I love uh, good old conspiracy theories. Um, and yeah, it was like, oh my god. Like I, I think it was years and years already in existence. And a friend was like, oh, let, let's play it. And it's like we played through like chapter one, and that took like a hundred hours. And I'm like, there's like twelve chapters. Like this game goes on forever. That's the the problem I find with MMOs is that. Especially after a while, they just become infinite, right? <laughs> I mean, Elite is sort of like that, right? In the sense that there's no there's no end in, in Elite, right? Like, you don't get to... You literally play until you burn out. <laughs> That's the game model <laughs> for this game. It's like, play until you can't... You don't like it no more. <laughs> um... Maybe the quality is hit or miss, but you'll never run out of content to do, and they're all well-designed. I mean, that's the pro and the con, right? You never run out of content, but it's also, like, you can never have, like, that conclusion where you feel like, All right, I'm done. No fetch quest for some stupid MacGuffin across the bubble quest? Yeah, there's a lot, there's, I think, too much of that in Elite, where it's just, like, track down this commodity, where I'm like, it could be a, a more interesting approach. Oh, I guess WoW used to be having stupid fetch quests back in the day. Yeah, I feel like fetch quests are so lazy. I mean, it's kind of like... It's sort of like ingrained in like the idea where it's like, Yeah, I need this thing. Can you get me this thing? Yeah, fair enough. But just don't make me go to a store and buy it and then bring it back. Like, that's annoying. Give me something where it's like, Yeah, you have to find this item by talking to this guy. And he'll tell you where you can find it. And then you'll get attacked by bandits or something, right? Uh, one of the requirements of being a game designer is to play a lot of games and be able to tell what are good design and what aren't. Well, I guess, but just like with any other uh, job, is everything subjective, right? Like, what, I'm, what, what I might like might not be what other folks like. That's right, I can't imagine being like a game designer. Like, okay, if I were a game designer, I would be entirely self-serving. I would just be like, what do I want to play? What, what am I going to enjoy? But you gotta wonder, like, is, is that a good game designer? Because I feel like that is a little bit what Elite people do, right? I think Elite, they kind of design a game that they would enjoy. As opposed to, like, if you try to design a game that other people would like, well, what set of people? Because you can't please everyone. So maybe you just have to kind of, like, do what what makes sense for you. Although I feel like the, the latest form of uh, Elite development is more like, what are we able to do given the code limitations? As opposed to, like, what do we want to do? It's more like, what can we do? I do want yeah, to it's a, it's a balance. The it's what? a balance of uh, it's it's a balance of like what do people want and what is our vision and design, yeah. and then find a midpoint between that. Is, that's I think that's the success. Because you can't just be all like uh, you know appealing to what people want. You gotta have your own vision of what the game is. If, if, kind you, of... if you try to appeal to what people want, you're gonna just remake another game that already exists. Because you're going to be, the, you're thinking in the spectrum of like what's already successful or what do we know people want, right? So like you want to make a game that people didn't know that they wanted. And you're only going to do that through, uh, you know, you got to be creative. Yeah, I think that's one of the flaws of FED. They, you know, listen too much to their audience and left their original vision too much. So it becomes this hybrid game that doesn't please neither group. <laughs> yeah. Too much or too little. The like they should, have, they should probably have went more for the pure sandbox stuff and not try to have this like main narrative thing. I actually feel the other way. I'm like, I think they should have more narrative um, to drive the sandbox, right? Because I do love the like, you know, it's like even like I, I, the reason I'm fighting Thargoids and doing all this personal narrative crap is because of the narrative, right? Like it gives it gives that sort of meaning where it's like, okay, uh, this is going on right now. I want to participate. Therefore, oh, I guess I have to do these things. Whereas if it was just pure sandbox, and it's like, yeah, you can do them, you can always do them, I'd never feel truly motivated to do it, right? I mean, I wanted narrative in ED2, but I wish they wouldn't have listened to me, <laughs> because I think it's unhealthy for the game. Well, I mean, 
the end of the day, as long as I can keep playing this damn game. <laughs> okay, so Ray Gateways where we're going, eh? Yes. Okay, so let me just first uh, put myself down uh, into the hangar, not down as in like the veterinarian. Um, I just want to store this thing that I just got that I don't really want. <laughs> Uh, lead is different from WoW, and WoW you spend, uh, the things you spend months to get become useless in the next update, even if they aren't the best in the game currently. In Elite, your ships are always useful. That's true. So I don't know, should I try out this shard cannon and then they just maybe, like, get rid of my ghost cannon? Yeah, let's do it that way. I'll give it a try. Uh, we're, we're, we're not jumping? Uh, not in the carrier. I'm jumping, no, but like, manually. To Diego Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm just throwing my uh, stuff on the dango bus here. I feel like I need to jump this to a different system so it's not a hundred light years away. And hold on, I might as well. I don't need this cargo rock anymore. I'll put my hull reinforcements back on. What do you mean? No! Ah! Ah! Okay, fine. I'll sell. I'll sell the refinery that I have in Colonia, even though it's engineered. Oh, shielded. Oh yeah, I'm getting rid of that. Okay, bye bye It's funny that I have a refinery all the way out in Colonia. I really hate the um, storage limits. That's so annoying. Okay. How many jumps? Blech. Oh no. Do I have a fuel scoop? I don't have a fuel scoop. <sighs> Do I equip a fuel scoop? On all ships, yes. I don't know. Well, it's like I, I not not for like a you know a Xeno ship, right? The carrier has like made fuel scoops a little bit like unnecessary, right? Like I, I have them on. I put them on all ships anyway. I really want to have fuel scoops. But that's just me. Alright, fine. I'll equip the fuel scoop. And then you know what I'm gonna do? Okay, so I'm gonna jump the carrier to like another system nearby that like isn't far away from the star. That way on the way back I can rendezvous again. So I'll just jump. You mean Ray Gateway? Uh, no, no, no. I'm just gonna jump the, the carrier uh, to another system here. Like, there. There, that's fine. Okay. Watch it jump now 400,000 light years away. No! Okay, and then I'm going to manually jump to your Ray Gateway. <coughs> so, is that how you're saying, um... You can go achievement hunting through WoW, play Pokemon... You can play Pokemon in WoW? Are you serious? That's pretty crazy. I mean, that's, that's where it's kind of like, yeah, like, at this point, like, is the, is the MMO, like, not so bloated with like a million things to do that at this point like if you didn't start playing 10 years ago you'll never catch up whereas in elite like i feel like you could still uh start a new commander tomorrow and like within a year actually probably catch up to what i've done in like eight years because i'm slow <laughs> all right how many jumps is this actually uh nine jumps okay that's not bad Grandmas do play WoW, what's your argument? Wait, grandmas play WoW? Does your grandma play WoW? That'd be kind of cool, though. I mean, pretty much, like, that's my plan for retirement. I'm like, if I ever make it to retirement age, I'll be playing video games, like, 24-7. Just strap, just strap me into a, a wheelchair with oxygen and a, a gaming rig on the side. And I'll just play Elite 24-7. And that is one of the uh, great arguments for video games, is that you can do it even if you're not like physically capable. Yeah. If you're old or, or sick or in a wheel-bound chair or whatever, you can still play video games and have a social life and stuff. Well, doesn't, uh, isn't that what special effect is all about? Like, for like kids that yeah. have disabilities, and they build like custom peripherals. I saw there, there's one guy streaming on Twitch, and I guess he, he's paralyzed from the, the sort of neck down, and he plays with like, kind of like a mouthpiece, 
right? That a lot that, that sort of acts as a joystick. And I'm like, that's cool, man, that we're at that age where it's like, or that like era of technology where it's like we can actually find a way to make this work. Next level is to just control it by by thinking. Oh man, just plug it into your brain. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Well, at that point, it's like, yeah, just upload me into the game. I just want to be like, just upload my consciousness into Elite. And then it's like, but we still don't have ship interiors. <laughs> Can you imagine though? If we had the technology to upload yourself into Elite, and then you literally like get ganked in real life. <laughs> Uh, but you're saying, uh, what are you saying, Zakao? You're saying, um, ED's level of being content is less polished than WoW's minor content. I can feel that. I mean, I think there are elements of the game that are super polished, but then, yeah, there's some other areas where it just, like, it still feels bare minimum after all these years. Like, they haven't, like, updated, um, some of the mission types or whatever. No, I think the main problem is... All the bugs and stuff still in yeah. ED, that's the problem. The, the the minor content is not so polished because it's meant to be like role played and stuff. But yeah. the problem is the bugs and, and everything. Well just even like okay, like, and, like and ship launch fighters and hiring crew, right? Like they, they don't even sit on the cockpit with you. Other than like launching them in a ship launch fighter, they have literally no benefit. Like they they only take your money. <laughs> and it's like you'd think like that feature was added like what, five years ago? whatever they however long it was and you'd think there'd be like a little iteration like oh yeah now now they can sit in the cockpit now they can give you an extra pip or i don't know like 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 just just have a little bit more utility for a feature in the game that's already there but it, it kind of feels like that's sort of I, I feel like that's a problem with elite where they kind of implement something and then they just never go back and, and touch it again yeah, because they get A and B level bugs, so they can't have time to <laughs> use the fix the C and D level bugs. They're not, you know, important enough. They have to spend all that damn time fixing bugs. Missions are not yeah. rewarding. Training is still pretty bare. Yeah, I feel like missions, like some of them are pretty rewarding. The, the crazy ass wing missions for like 100 million, well, like 40 million, 50 million. Uh, they can get up there, but it's still like when you compare it to like. This is like, I look at the Golconda, and that was the most fun I ever had doing trading in my life. Because I felt this huge dopamine rush, where I'm like, oh my god, I'm making so much money, and all my dreams are coming true. Right? And it's like, that, that a, a, you know, a normal set of mission running, maybe not Golconda level, but should get you, like, significant progress. And I can understand, like, okay, like, data courier missions, sure. That's not, like, I don't expect, like, to be paid millions of dollars for data couriering. But, like, there should be more, um, you know, crazy high-level missions where, you know, you could get, like, a fleet carrier in, like, a couple hours. But, like, they're incredibly difficult missions. So maybe, like, yeah, it might take you three days just to beat the mission. It's like, yeah, like, this mission is, like, take a passenger to Sagittarius and back, and we'll give you, like, five billion dollars. Like, why don't we have missions like that? We do have, like, like missions where it's like, yeah, take me to Sagittarius. I'll pay you 24 million. Like, what? I want to make more in the, in the honking. Like, they really need to up some of the, the, the values. And I don't understand, like, people always complain about this, and they never do it. The bounty hunting CG is bugged. Uh, system security shoots me without having a bounty. Uh-oh. Risk versus reward is way off. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how you would attempt balancing in a game like this where they're just at this point, like, you have engineering materials, you have weapon effects, you have, like, engineering, you have power play weapons, you have BGS, you have Thargoids. Like, there's so many discrete elements of the game that I'm like, how do you balance them all out? Like, how do you balance a frag cannon that's engineered with double shot versus someone who's got, uh, you know, um, the latest ship? There's like 32 ships in the game. Like they, they could do what they did with World Warcraft. Is it really is like Elite Dangerous Classic, like <laughs> an old school version of the game where there's no engineering and old school, you know, low fee carriers and just uh, you know regular regular level missions, payouts, and to to bring to bring it back the, the old days and get rid of the power creep. Yeah, I mean, I remember back in the day, it was like everyone complained uh, how missiles were useless. 
That was like the original argument was like, okay, well, am I here? No, I think I'm still one. Jump away. Yeah. Um, like, it was kind of like missiles were, were like horribly nerfed at the very beginning of the game. It was just one of those things where uh, ever since then, it, it, they've not eliminated that complaint. That complaint just shifts, it shifted from like missiles to this to that. There's always some area in the game that, that everyone's complaining is like super underbalanced or overbalanced, and every time they adjust it, there's something else. And that is like, I guess like, that is like a full-time job, right? They gotta have like a balanced department with like three guys that constantly sit there. What about this? Okay, here we are. Ray Gateway. Yeah, the, the, the universal argument for why things are unbalanced is uh, place you on trail. <laughs> That's the thing they can always say when, when people complain about these things. Yeah. You don't have to do crappy missions, but you can if you want to roleplay. That's true. So that's kind of how to get out of it. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't want that job. It's like, hey, Spatula, you're in charge of balancing Elite. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> Everyone's gonna be mad at me. For something, rather. I don't know. I would just make everything, like, super balanced. I think, like, you should... Like, the, the problem I find is, like, um... Uh... The, the biggest thing is, like, d combat takes too long or too short. Right? Like, either you're spending an hour trying to kill an anaconda in a sidewinder or you're getting immediately murdered by gankers with ultra engineered weapons there needs to be some way to like like you know like like combat can't go on too long and it can't be too too short there needs to be some sort of defense against the insta ganks i don't know what it is though i'm not creative enough the first thing I will probably want to fix is like make smaller ships more viable. I would love to fly sm smaller ships in combat uh, more often, but they just don't have firepower enough. That's true. I'm gonna use my like two size one pulse lasers against your like eleven thousand yeah. prismatic shields. If they had like some big work. crazy size one um, weapons. But yeah, I guess it's kind of like, yeah, like like the size 1 weapons are just no... They're never going to be better than the size 2 or size 3 weapons, right? But it would be kind of cool to have something something that would balance it out, that would make size 1 weapons, like, viable. Like, maybe they're weapons that have special effects that, like, you can't get on big ships, right? Support kind of weapons. And even if you can wear them down with that, you can just... Uh, he can just jump out because he has more mass lock factor than you, so he'll just run away. That's true. It's, there's so many problems. That's what I said. Yeah. You can't balance this game. It's not gonna happen. Don't try. Yeah. Don't try. <laughs> don't try. Don't try. Buff for my, my Viper Mark IV. I'd go for that. Uh, that's I, a great I like ship. the Viper Mark IV. I think that's I like excellent. the three a little bit better, um, just so it goes faster. Like, I really the like the Viper Mark III just as a speed ship. Yeah, the Mark IV is a really good multi-purpose. You can get good drop jump range, and you can have all sorts of modules on there. Mine's like got like a 41 light year jump range and combat builds and wow. SRV and everything, yeah. This is pretty good. A great ship. I just like the, how fast the Viper can go. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. When you when you're when you when you're just like uh, undocking and going out of a station, it takes like two seconds. I haven't had time to try out my new Eagle build though, I want to try it soon. It's just a long range beam laser and two um, jump fire missile launchers with penetrator. Penetrator missiles. Try to try to stupid shields and then just like to try to nuke the modules with the dump fires. And you can get with the advanced uh, dump fires, you get like 96 missiles or something in a size one. So you are pretty yeah. endurance. Small ship DPS, medium as multi roll can do everything, but is but good at support. Yeah, I feel like that they need like a different role for small ships. Like they need to be like support ships or something, right? Or have some sort of functions. Like there needs to be something you can do in a Viper that like you can't do in a Chieftain. Like you're too big. That's where I like like those CQC base facilities where it's kind of like, okay, like in a small ship you could weave through the facility a little easier. It's like throwing a hot dog down the hallway. All right, uh, let's see here. So shard cannons. Where's the thing that I want? 
plasma charger. Oh, that's what I want. Is it? That's what I want. Yeah, 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 that's the one. I want three yes. of those, please. I've not tried these before, so I don't know how they work, but they seem fun. They are fun. I'll even buy with some too, and we can do some combat. You want to what? Against other things. I'll also buy some plasmas, and we'll have some plasma party. Yeah, apparently these actually are pretty good at um, like human combat as well. They are decent for that, yeah. So yeah, these are not pre-engineered or anything. And I guess you can't engineer stuff that's not pre-engineered when it comes to Xenos. Mm, no, you can't. Okay, so... Okay, I think we're good. Um, hold on, I need to put a crew person in here. And my latest thing has been to just hire an expert and then fire them later. So let's see. I will hire Broderick Chase temporarily as we head back to fight Thargoids. Alright, you're hired. Temporarily, on contract work. Set him active, and there we go. Okay, so now it's back to HIPP. Which I might do another little quick bio break. I went out drinking last night. It's actually my birthday this weekend. So my friends took me out, got me drunk last night. Now I'm all hungover and have to pee a lot. As you do when you get older. It's just what happens. <laughs> what is this? It's a very dark moon. I guess it's just not loaded in. I want to see the Proteus Cannon. Alright, well, whatever. I guess we, we, we don't need to worry about where to go until we get to that system. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zakal. Yeah, happy cake day. Healy's for feelings. Uh uh, a previous squad member of mine used to say, Happy Survival Day. Happy Survival I don't give a shit about... Because survive so many years, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't care that much for birthdays, because I'm just like... It's such a, it's such a three-dimensional concept, you know? Like, we're not in the same location as where the sun was a year ago. The only reason we have these units of measurements is because, you know, yeah, okay, we have a 24-hour day, we have four seasons, that helps with the crops. I am not a stock of grain! I am a human being, and we are hurtling through space, and uh, uh, I just don't care. But, you know, I'll take any excuse to drink. So, <laughs> Same, Stosh. Yeah, my birthday is also Sunday. We were doing our, our thing. We have the same birthday. We're birthday bros. Uh, but yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I don't really do that much to celebrate. My friends are like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go out. We'll take you drinking. Have a little scotch, uh, a little bit of beer. And then uh, we went to, like... Um, like a burger place because I'm all into burgers exactly I'm on a rock floating in space what do I fucking care about birthdays for I want to see I want to see the stars man we were born in this like weird gap between like uh, people thought the earth was flat and you know no and you know so someone landed on the moon and then you know we're born into this era where like we don't really go to space that much anymore and we can't quite go to the stars and there's no like faster than light travel it's like I wish I wish we were you know like we could figure out FTL in this in this lifetime because we're in that little like period where it's like we've already explored most of the Earth minus the oceans. Who gives a shit about those? Well, we all we know is there's a bunch of microplastic at the bottom and a bunch of those like um, six pack coke rings. <laughs> but <laughs> that's probably what's down there. But you know it's like okay we, we 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 yeah fair enough okay maybe James Cameron is working on exploring the ocean. That's the new frontier we have. But like. You know, we can't really get into space travel. It's too early for that. I would love to go to Mars. I would love to fly by Europa. But, um, you know, I, I don't think even even Elon Musk has enough money to pull that one off. Um, but we're nowhere near where I was born. Exactly. That was in a different quadrant at this point. The galaxy's hurtling around the center of the Milky Way. It's all bullshit. It's like uh, astrology, right? It's like, uh, you know, it's fooey. It's fooey. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do a quick bio break. Then we're going to kill some Thargoids, finally. Um as we jump back. So I will be back in, in, in five, ten minutes and then uh, then gear up your Thargoid lasers. Alright, BB.
All right, I'm back. What did I miss? Astrology is woo woo. We are nowhere near the birth of space. I mean, like, we are kind of near the birth of space, but like, it's like fetal at this stage. It's like third trimester space exploration. I want to go to like, you know, other planets, but you know, it's like maybe, maybe there's a hope that you could go to the moon in uh, like 30, 40 years, maybe, maybe, probably not. Um, one can dream though. I mean, I've been to the moon. Uh, oh, my carrier completed its jump. Wonderful. All right, let's go kill some Stargoids. Smokes a kipper, throws it in the vicar. <laughs> what is this nonsense? I love it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back to the Danga bus because my build is not optimized. I need to get um, the fuel scoop off this thing and replace that with armor because we're going to need it. Stargoids are tough, boys. Leaves the lid off a milk bottle after use. How dare you? Spits on the pavement. That's perfectly appropriate, actually. Wearing shoes at home. Hey, I'm wearing my Birkenstocks right now. I just like that extra padding. Birkenstocks, they will make your feet bleed until they are the most comfortable shoes that you've ever worn. It's bizarre. So yeah, maybe a, killing a couple Cyclopses, maybe a Basilisk would be nice to take down. I've never taken down anything higher than a Cyclops. But I'm finding uh, Thargoid combat really does kind of like uh, test the limits of your of your flight skills, which are you know in my case very low. <laughs> but I guess there are some people that can't even kill a, a Thargoid. Yeah, I'm not a fan. It's too tactical for me. Thargoid combat. See, that's what I like it's about it. Kind of preferred fighting to be more intuitive and based on reflexes rather than just like follow these steps to win. Yeah, personally, but yeah. I, I see. This is the thing. Like, like um, I remember, like the, the, one of the first space games that really just like got me into the the series was uh, Wing Commander Prophecy. And if you ever played the Wing Commander games, they are excellent, uh, excellent games. Uh, the first one I ever played uh, from Chris Roberts was Privateer, actually, um, back in the day. But Wing Commander Prophecy, I, I loved, and um, the one part I loved the most about it was the sort of carrier conflict where you would fight these capital ships and you'd have to basically, yeah, kill all the turrets on them. There's, you know, go blow up all the modules on the capital ship and you'll eventually blow up the ship. And so I, I like the idea that like, it's it, it's like Thargoid Conflict isn't just like shoot them until they die and they just move different. Like there actually is like a strategy and like you have to do specific things. I like the technicality of that combat. It separates it from just like ship to ship conflict. Like, I mean, even in ship conflict, I like that there's, like, you can target the power plant, you can target the shields. Like, I wish there, were, there was a little bit more to that. Um, but I love the idea that, you, yeah, it's like I could disable modules or engineer my thing to, like, prevent them from uh, using their, their jump drive. Those are cool little features that I enjoy. Hopefully I can scoop it up as I'm going. Let's see, did that move my fuel star? Fuel, fuel star? Oh, my fuel star is the next star. And I just need enough for two jumps. Okay. Reminder: do not do not fail to feel scoop. <laughs> you made an omelet without breaking eggs. How did you do that? Uh oh, Kevin Bananas in HIP two two four six zero. Excellent reconnaissance, Dark Envy. That's very good to know. I love Kevin Ban. We should bring him a meta alloy. He's he's my favorite. It's like, Zarek Newell doesn't play the game anymore. He moved on. But in his absence, a new hero is born. Kevin Banan. Your family will burst into bestial rage if you do not wear your slippers at home. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's enough. We got enough. Just enough to make it to the Danga bus. Now, hopefully this time, it actually parked near the star. That would be nice. Okay, I'm going to heat sink just because that buzzing is annoying. Uh, you remember one has Mark Camel in it. Mark Camel? <laughs> Mark Camel? <laughs> Whether you spelt that, Mark Camel. Yeah, Wing Commander, um, yeah, Mark Camel's in all of them, 
really. Like, at least up to Prophecy. Like, in the first three, uh, or no, the first four, you're playing as Mark Hamill. So, like, what was his character name? I can't remember his, what, his, what he was called or whatever, but um, Bla Blair. Something about Blair. Commander Blair. But, like, okay, so the first one, it's like, yeah, the Kilrothi War. I can't remember what the second one was. I think the second one, it was like your wingmate Angel dies at the end or gets captured by the Kilrathi. And then I remember the third one, Heart of the Tiger... Like, yeah, that's the plot. You're, like, trying to find your, your, your wingmate from the first one. And at the end of it, you actually, like, send an earthquake bomb down to the Kilrathi homeworld and, like, devastate them, which is pretty dope. Um, and in the fourth one, that was, like, The Price of Freedom with Malcolm McDowell as and Grand Admiral Tolwyn. And uh, he does bad, evil things, and you have to defeat him. And then Prophecy was, like, the passing of the torch one. Where you were like this new pilot, I don't think you were related to um, Blair in any way, but he was like your mentor. So Blair was like Mark Hamill was still in it as your wingmate. I think he actually gets captured in Prophecy. Like Mark Hamill gets captured by the like, like now it's like a new bad guy. I don't know what they were called. Like some evil weird aliens that jumped in from another dimension. I think he, I think he, I don't know, I don't, I can't remember if Mark Hamill dies at the end of that one, or if he gets out, or if it's sort of left up in the air. I think that's the, I don't know, I think that's the last Wing Commander game, so I don't know if they made another one after that. But Prophecy was what really, I, I played Prophecy first, and then went back and played, I don't think I played Wing, I played Wing Commander 1 very briefly, I didn't finish it. Wing Commander 2 I skipped. Um, 3 I did not play, but I watched like, um, like these games at the time had like, full uh, acted cutscenes. Like, they were like interactive movies in a sense, right? They also were like, the like, like they all also offered like branching narrative paths. Like if you made, I remember in like Wing Commander 3, you can make the decision whether it's like, do you hunt down the traitor or do you stay and, and obey orders kind of thing. And that would like determine what the mission order would be. And in Wing Commander 4, I believe there was like a whole branching uh, storyline. And same with Prophecy, like, there were definitely, like, consequences of failing missions, where it's like, the game wouldn't end and restart if you failed a mission, but, like, your CO would be mad at you, and that might lose you an advantage later down the road, which I thought was cool. I've always enjoyed the Wing Commander games, they're a lot of fun. And of course, the, the new Wing Commander universe is the Star Citizen universe. So I am really, I'm looking forward, I think, to Squadron 42 even more than... Star Citizen itself. Like, I love the promise of Star Citizen, but that's going to take another 10 years. <coughs> Squadron 42, when that, whenever that comes out, I think will be, like, a nice, tight, complete game. Which will be cool. What do you got there, Dark Heavy? Oh, it's uh, Kevin Banana. Kevin may be bananas, but him fighting gankers in a service... is a service second only to the Fuel Rats. Change my mind. Oh, is Kevin Banana now an anti-ganker? That's awesome. Kevin only charity worker. <laughs> That's his line. Uh, when you watch TV, there'll be some guilo gringo wearing shoes on a sofa or bed. Oh yeah, like being in bed with your shoes on. That's definitely uh, it's definitely weird. Okay, next jump is the dang bus. Then we can go kill some goids. Uh, something that could be a space epic like Mass Effect, also published by EA. Man, if that not if that not screams Bioware, well, I, I uh, that's another one is um, Mass Effect. Uh, I know for like Prime Day they had like it, it was free, but then I noticed oh you had to like subscribe to Amazon's like gaming service. Like I'm not there. I I can't do any more subscriptions. But I do love the idea um, uh, of playing Mass Effect again. It's been a while. Uh, nope, I'm gonna have to go to the system map because I filtered these out. Okay, Dagobus, please don't be, like, a million miles away. Oh, okay, 519 light seconds. That's promising. Alright, so we'll dock there, I'll just swap out my modules, and then we will head into the fray. And look at that, just enough fuel to make it here. But yeah, Mass Effect, it's been a while since i played it, and I heard that they, they, they remastered the first one, so it's like they eliminated a lot of the annoyances, like the uh, car getting stuck on terrain, or the clunkiness. 
So I've been thinking about, like, yeah, replaying that. Because it's been a super long time. And Mass Effect had these really cool branching storylines as well. It's like, I remember in the first one, it was like, do you save the, the brother or the sister? And you can only save one, and then you're kind of stuck with them the rest of the game. And then uh, in uh, Mass Effect 2, you import your decisions from the first one. Now, I remember when I played Mass Effect 2, I think I played the original on Xbox. And I played the second one on PC. And it was kind of cool. They give you, like, a recap of the story, and you get to make those decisions. But if I were to replay them all on PC, I would just start at the beginning and play them all through. I never played Mass Effect 3. And I've heard uh, a lot of people are very, um, uh, like like polarized on it I'm not sure if it's just about the ending I think it was one of those things where like uh, yeah you, you do all this stuff that you're making choices and then you get to the very end and it's just like you, you get to pull one of three levers and pick the ending you want and all of your choices didn't really matter in a sense at least that's what I know about it Mass Effect is a comfort game not the first one, all three. Yeah, like that's what I think. I'll I'll just get it on Steam. Like I, I'm fine paying for Mass Effect again. It's a good it's a good series. It deserves my money. Look at this lovely pink planet. It's very fleshy. You should tell uh, Sally about this planet. Not nowhere near as bad as you think. Yeah, see, see, I, I imagine that Mass Effect three, like people were just maybe upset about the ending or the story choices. And maybe that tainted their whole experience, but maybe the, the game itself is actually pretty good. I'd give it a shot at this point. I definitely enjoyed Mass Effect 2, I think, the most. And you know what I really want to go back and play is Knights of the Old Republic. Man, those games were fun. And it's been years since I played them, so I wouldn't remember jack about them. It would be like playing it all again for the first time. That was another thing in the Amazon... Uh, Prime Day thing they were giving away on their Game Pass, like Mass Effects and uh, I think it was like Jedi Knight and Jedi Knight 2 and man, like that that brings me back many, many nights where I did not sleep to play uh, Jedi Knight you should play it before reading stuff on sites, they are farming clicks, not writing genuine pieces Oh, I've seen too much of that clickbait. That was actually a pretty smooth little boosting maneuver there. If you boost and then hit your uh, landing gear halfway through the boost, you can kind of control a little bit of the, uh, the speed there. Pro tips. Pro tips from Spatula. Actual tips. Okay. Uh, let's go down to the hangar. We're gonna get rid of this stuff. If you're an Asian parent, sure. <laughs> Good old Asian dad. Okay, so I wanna go to outfitting. Is this gonna be your your module? You your you have no module space left. Okay, I want to store the fuel scoop. And then, can I add in some armor? Or not armor, but modules. Hull reinforcements. Uh, I guess the D, sure. Oh, that's too big. I need a three. And I don't have a three. Wonderful. Okay, uh, what about module reinforcements? Yes! Okay, I do have that. And I will also do that with the uh, FSD. Because I don't need jump speed right now. Or jump, lane, jump range. Yep, just haul reinforcements all throughout. Now, it, mm, maybe I should put the Xeno Limpets here, actually. Uh, where are they? Multi-Limpet controllers. Yeah, I'll put the Xeno Limpets there, because you do need the, uh, the decontaminators. Okay, we're all set up and good to go. If our HUD would kindly load. Insufficient cargo space. Wait, what? What do I have in my cargo? Oh, I don't have any cargo. Oh, that's what I had there before. Ooh. 
Yeah, so if I have limpets, I need to also, like, have room for limpets. I could replace this 2D. Do I have a 2 cargo? I do. Four limpets? I think that should be okay. Let's do that. That was my problem the last last week when we were doing all the Thargoid stuff. I was just getting clobbered by the damn uh, contaminations. Okay, we should be good now. Alright, Phil, I'm jumping over to H-A-P-P. Mm, Alright. H-A-P-P. 22460. Uh, I don't need to care about where we land there, we just need to find AX signal sources, I think. Although I kind of liked uh, the capital ship battles. We could go and see if there are like massive amounts of players there uh, ganking hydras. What a cool system though. Look at all these gas giants. Uh, not geek gaming, but you really need to play a game at least one playthrough in order to have a grounded opinion. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, I always take other people's opinions with a grain of salt when it comes to gaming, because that, like, you know, it's like everyone has different expectations. There are games that I have loved that have been slaughtered in reviews, but they did something special for me. Cargo is another stupid jank that Edie's not fixing. They have one ton of bio in my winder, no matter how much I pay, they won't move it over to the next station in the system. What? If you have one ton of bio in your sidewinder, no matter how much you pay, they won't move it over to the next station in the system. Oh, you mean like, yeah, it's like, let me just sell it to you, even though you don't want to buy it? Like, why don't you want to buy it? Why don't you want my bio waste? It's good quality. So I'm using a federal assault ship this time. Ooh, it's nice. probably a bad idea. I actually have but a got... federal assault ship, all spec for Thargoids, but I never fly it. I, I got inspired it. by it the other day. Federal bricks. I should give that a try. I do like the crate though, just from its speed and nimbleness, and I feel like that's probably more important, especially when you're not fighting Thargoids with like a large group of people. So I think the fast is faster though, but uh, crates are pretty fast too. I probably don't have it engineered enough. My crate is like f almost fully engineered, like everything's pretty top tier. Uh, it's like how your opinion is that ME3 is worthy conclusion of Commander Shepard's story. Okay. I will, uh, yeah, I will, um, continue that on my list. Right now, I, I, my friend of mine got me Valheim and, uh, uh, what is it? Chorus. And I'm enjoying both of those. Ooh, FNS Varian Scott AX Conflict Zone High Intensity. Let's go there. That sounds like, uh, fun. Fun? Question mark. <laughs> Don't sound uh, convinced. It could, it could also go horribly wrong. I'm noticing the high intensity thing. Ooh, there's a player here named System Shock UK. I love the System Shock. Are they not remaking System Shock or making a new System Shock thing? Oh, let's get Dark Heavy in the wing. Invite to team. Or sorry, Squad Punch. Let's say Squad Punch. You have an invite, sir. So yeah, there's probably going to be like a lot of people in this conflict zone, but that could be entertaining. Oh, hold on, let me just make sure. Are my fire groups set? That's a very important thing to look at. No, they are not. Okay, so three plasma chargers on uh, one, and then one little shard cannon on two. All right, so I've never tried these uh, these thingies before. It's going to be interesting, and I'm going too fast. I'm, I'm eager to try these. I hope there's like 20 people here fighting a Hydra. But yeah, I wish I, I wish I could have been able to go to a LaveCon this year. It was just like bad timing. Next year I'm going to plan. I'm going to plan it. Last year I did, oh, wow. I did like 
London, Amsterdam, and then like Northern England uh, for LaveCon and visiting Scorbius and uh, some relatives as well. But next time I go to LaveCon, I'm like, where do I go? I want to go to like I think Paris, maybe somewhere in Belgium. I don't know. Spain, Bas Barcelona, Dublin. It's always exciting to go to Europe. There's so many different flavors and places you can go. All right, here we go. Experimental Farragut Battle Cruiser. Oh yeah, we got some. We got some. We got some folks here. All right, let's sign up with the good guys, Pilots Federation. I love how it's just like join the flight or or, or decline, right? It's like, oh, 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 oh! I crashed. Damn it. <laughs> okay. Well, that was interesting. You really want to visit England? Uh, I would recommend it. It's it's actually pretty cool. I had a really good time in London. London was a really cool city. Very big. Lots of stuff to do. Lots of stuff to explore. Okay, I'm just booting back in. I wonder if this is... Um, I heard that if someone has a ship-launched fighter out in these instances, it can really screw things up. Yeah, England, I, I enjoyed it. Um, the northern country as well was interesting to visit. Um, different pace out there. But London was the highlight for me. You're not a surfer, but one of my teachers is, and he surfed uh, in Severnborn every year. Is Severnborn in, in England? I heard there's, like, good surfing around Portugal, but it's, like, really dangerous. But yeah, if I'm planning it out for next year, I have plenty of time to, like, save and kind of figure out what I want to do. It would have been nice to go this year, but things just didn't work out. All right, I'm back in. Uh, can, do you guys, can you send me a, a Bing, Bing Vin bite? Yeah, as soon as possible. Still in main menu for me. Wait, what? I'm in. Uh oh. There we go. Power priorities. Um, uh oh. <laughs> I hit. This is not good. Uh, Xeno scanner. Okay, put that on four or three. Uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, my power priorities are screwed up right now. Okay, that's good. Except wing invite. Where is it? Wing invite. It's still active. That's weird. I had to go into like Dark Heavy to like find the team invite. It wasn't showing up. I see you in an instance. Alright, this looks like a uh, Hydra? It looks like two Hydras. Ooh, how lovely. Why are my shields yeah, I... off? What happened to my shields? The power and stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Alright, well, let's see what these plasma chargers are like. So charge him up first. Let's get in behind him. I don't know which circle do I aim at. Oh my! Oh ho 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 ho! I like these. I like them a lot. Oh, pretty. Okay, this has been a very good investment. Oh, that's cool. They're colored. So someone else here is here with a purple version. Ooh, these do a lot of damage. Oh, he's noticed me. Senpai has noticed. A little bit hard to aim for the heart, though. Yes. <laughs> oh, how did you get my canopy already? Oh, damn you, Thargoid. That's fine, I wasn't using it anyway. Oh, he's very interested in me. Okay, I think you need to like run away a little bit. Yeah, you're in your hollis. We'll do a heat sink. Okay, shields are back. Let's do a little loop see around this carrier. Or um, capital ship, I guess is the right word. 
Yeah, without a HUD, it becomes a little bit difficult to target these guys even more so. They're pretty good against scouts, these plasmas. You kind of got to eyeball it because you don't get your lead tracker. Uh, oh yeah, I need pips of weapons. Oh, close, close. Hi! <laughs> Don't mind me. Just a friendly boop from your neighborhood spatula. Where'd he go? Man, they're wily. You can't really... I wonder, does your heat increase while you hold this down? No, okay. So you just hold it down, and it's fine. Incoming caustic missile. How dare you? I'm running away from it. Running away. I actually think I got away from the missile. Yeah, you can't outrun those, eh? That's that's awesome. Oh, oh, yeah, I got him. Wow, I like these guns. They look pretty. Ooh. Very pretty. Can't see too much bullshit going on. <laughs> Oh no, he's looking at me. Uh, quickly run into him! That was a smart decision. Okay, no, run away, run away, run away, run away, run away. Reverski. Man, these guys can really take a pound in, though, eh? Oh, he's exerted. Ooh, I actually think I got that. Come at me, sucker. Come at me, you cosmic starfish! Okay, so I'm in love with these plasma chargers. Like, I'm mad that people didn't yell at me before. Hey, what's up, Commander? Scorpius, how you doing? Sorry, I've been, like, obsessed with this Thargoid, so I haven't been watching the comments. But how you doing? How you enjoying LaveCon, man? Have you got a chance to chat with Tacosa yet? I've been seeing some cool uh, images coming out of there. I wish I was there. Next year I was talking about doing that. I'm going to cosplay a spatula and come there. Yeah, I wish I could come there. How, how was it? How did it go for you, Scorb? Did you have a good time? I guess it's only day one. Are you there for day two as well? And what's been... Uh, what, what are the secrets that um, the developers aren't telling us? I'm assuming there was an open bar again. And I'm assuming that um, one of the developers clearly leaked the roadmap. <laughs> Probably not, eh? Okay. Whee! Oh my god. That was scary. You had some awesome Tacosa hugs? Oh, yeah. No, I saw the pictures of Tacosa there, and I'm like... Yeah, because he, he, when I went before, he wasn't able to come. And it's like, he's here, there this year, and I'm like, I'm not. And I'm like, ah! So next year, I'm going to plan to... Uh, I'm going to do it. And put that plan in stone right now. Figure out a way to go to LaveCon for 2021. Assuming that they have another LaveCon in 2021. 2021? Or, uh, wait, what, what year is it? 23. <laughs> oh, God! Oh god! It's like that COVID stuff, it just distorts your sense of time, right? Okay, it is so hard not to... I can't hit this guy because I don't have my tracking indicators. He's a slippery little Hydra. 
open bar was a thing. We all drank beer. Awesome. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm like, I was like watching some of the the posts about it. Oh, hold on, I gotta recense some uh, life support here. I was watching the post and I'm just like, oh man, I really wanted to go. Like, e even I had a thought about go coming last minute. I had that like severe FOMO. Okay, what is shooting at me? Stop shooting at me. Oh god, caustic missile! Ah! Okay, now I'm dead. That's fine. You got the distinct feeling from Arv and Bruce that there's a lot coming. Okay. I mean, they de- Oh, wait, I was killed by a commander, apparently. Maybe an anti-Xeno ganker? Interesting. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, definitely I get the sense that they- You know, it sounds to me like there's always something around the corner. But I feel like, okay... Based on the Burr Pit video, this community goal, the Salvation storyline coming to a head, a planet's been permanent locked. If there isn't something at the end of that, something really juicy, then uh, I think, you know, that would be bad. <laughs> so there has to be. There better be something coming. It's just a question of when. And yes, exactly. If bartenders could offer drinks, I think that would be good enough for most people. That would be literally a feature that people would be like, yeah, no, that's fine. I wanted Thargoids on foot, but I will accept, uh... I will accept, uh, bartender selling drinks. And, and sitting. And sitting! Well, hold on, hold on, we, we got sitting. Yeah, I know, I know. You want more sitting? You want more places uh, to sit? Just, just sitting. I want to sit on the outside of my ship. I want, I want there to be a seat on top of my crate that I can sit in and someone else, and then I can lift off the ship and go to orbit. That would actually be really cool. <laughs> But yeah, I guess it, that would be ironic if at LaveCon, uh, Frontier was like, yeah, we're going to have open bar, and then you go to the bartender, and he hands you a roll of graphene. <laughs> like, Sorry, the, the company that sponsored this event. So if you have materials, I'm willing to trade. It's like, well, let me see here. I got uh, two buttons and a scrap of lint in my pocket. What will that get me? That will get you one micro electrode, sir. I think I'm stuck in a loading screen. At least it looks pretty. As soon as we got here to these, uh, uh, these, uh, conflict zones, like, the game is kind of breaking a little bit, eh? Um... Yeah, I barely get out alive. I was, like, 2% hull. Oh, you right got out there. there. Well, good on you. Yeah, I did. I did. I was not so fortunate. I pushed it to the limits. Hydras are deadly. Though. Yeah, honestly, they are, uh, insanely deadly. Like, I, I still struggle a little bit with, like, the, the Basilisk. Uh, Kerbal Space Program has an external chair. Oh, yeah. I have made many a rocket in Kerbal Space Program. Oh, Orange Sidewinder. I've made many rockets in Kerbal Space Program where it's uh, just a dude strapped to the top, sitting in a chair. Oh, man, I can't wait for... Kerbal Space Program 2 is just around the corner as well. I think it's sometime in 2023. But I'm super stoked for that. I love the Kerbal Space Programs. Uh, okay, I need to make sure that my pilot's alive. And he's active. Good, good, good. He's gonna be fired soon. This is your time to, t to shine, man. And all those, g all good those limpets did me. I mean, technically I could just outrun the damn missiles. You got ganked? So, yeah, there must be gankers in... Because, I mean, like, if you think about it, it's a ganker fantasy. Like, everyone's paying attention to big, bad Thargoid battles. Like, you just come in and kill everyone. They're not even going to notice. Clever gankers. Well, how about instead of going to the capital ship, we just go to a signal source? Gankers can't go there. Gankers can't find That's true. signal sources. Just going to repair first. Yeah, yeah. If there's a landing pad. That's just the other problem, right? It's it, it, like, I think that's even more, that's that's more devastating than ganking, is just sitting on uh, pads, pad blocking. So at least with ganking, there's like the idea that you can fight back. <laughs> you literally cannot do anything with uh, a pad blocker. All right, just go solo. It's the only thing, really. Yep. But that's like, that's like admitting defeat, right? There should be a way to, um, there should be a way to oust a pad blocker. Submit a station complaint. Okay, I'm back in the wing. 
Alright, I'm gonna find a signal source we can go to. There's actually one very close here. What is it? Non-human. Uh, threat 5. Okay, perfect. I think threat 5 is like your your typical Cyclops. Or maybe... Um, oh, how are these plasma accelerators gonna work against scouts? They work excellently, as long as they hit. Yeah? I think the hard part would be hitting them, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna drop at this threat 5. And then when you gents get here, you get here. Hold on, where's my... I'm not on the team. Can you send me another team? Yeah, I've sent you a couple of invites, yeah. There we go, okay, it worked this time. Yeah, I accepted them before, it just didn't come through. Again, more mm. glitches. More bugs. The Thargoids have infected the system. Go figure. But yeah, man, it's uh, it, it's sad not to be at LaveCon. I do miss Scorb. I, I I went to Scorb's place and we had a barbecue with Yamix and um, and Grey Test, and Scorb made a very 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 good breakfast. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to Xeno scan this little bad boy. Unless he's already mad at me. Oh, he's already mad at me. That's fine. I'm still gonna scan you. Can I scan you? Oh no, I can't because I'm. My power priorities are all screwed up. Alright, well, that's fine. Uh, can I deploy launch bay malfunction? Oh, great, so my fighters can't get out. What have I done? And wait, I'm not on the team anymore. Did I get kicked off? I don't know, I invited you again. That's weird, man. <laughs> I really like these guns. You like that, Thargy boy? I think they have a bigger hitbox than other plasmas for some reason. Yeah, I mean, uh, I like the goo that they leave behind. They also leave behind like that residue. Ho 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 ho! Alright. The hard part is like, when you don't have the parts targetable. And it's like, okay. Because you need to Xeno scan these boys to uh, get their hearts targetable. Come on. I can't even tell if I'm, what I'm shooting here. Oh, I think I might have got a heart. Why am I not on the team anymore? Oh my god! This is super glitched today, isn't it? Oh no, I didn't yes. get the heart. I just failed to get the heart in time. And I think that if you don't exert, if you exert the heart and then you don't like uh, follow through on it, I think you actually um, uh, like the Thargon, the Thargon swarm gets more angsty. It's bad. I think I got him good there. Not good enough. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's one hard time. So now we boost away, we run away. This is a good time to charge your shields. This is uh, Spatula giving you Xeno combat tips. And just like not being able to get in this damn wing. I don't know why. No, I relogged to main menu, it seems to have fixed it. I can see you fine now. And I will be dropping oh, into your instance uh, very shortly. So now I just gotta wait for this angry goid to uh, calm the hell down. I should do pretty well. Okay, can I not launch my fighter bay? If okay, so if I launch my fighter by putting the power priorities up. No, and then everything shuts down. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, what if I just get rid of life support? No, I need life support. Wow, I'm gonna have to engineer my uh, power plant thing. And oh yeah, there, there go my shields. Okay, that was not a wise thing. Don't play with your power priorities when you're fighting aliens. Okay, it looks like he's good to go. He's not glowing and angry anymore. Okay, 
Okay, Pip's two weapons. I think Phil's here. Oh yeah. Yes. That's an entrance. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god. I really like this gun. It's a little bit harder to aim than uh, the flak cannons, but... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I really like these guns. I like that you can also charge them, and even while they're charged, you can have your um, your weapons pips will actually like still increase. Okie dokie. Gotta re-exert that heart. Oh yeah. Come on, there you go. Oh, he's shooting me with lightning. Oh, now he's interested in you. Come on. Oh, man. Just hold still for a second, would you? Just try to, I just want to do one, I just want to test something for science here, Thirty Boy. I can't see, I can't see. Oh boy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard the lightning sounds. Oh, the card number two is down. Okay, nice. run away, run away. Well, this is only a Cyclops, right? Mm, yeah. That would be nice if I had my fighter bay. I mean, I dedicated six slots, or six size slot for that. Uh-oh, caustic missiles. I can't shoot them down, can I? Oh, no, I cannot. Oh, dang it, he got me. All right. Limpet time. Oh no wait. Why can't I use my limpets? Are they not bound? Do I not have limpets on fire group? Oh no I don't, do I? Uh, okay, decontaminados. Decontaminados. And then watch it be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... I can't even use them because of the stupid thing. Wait a minute. Do I have caustic damage? I think I do. I'm going to go burn it off with heat. The heat method feels very dangerous. I have limpet if you need. I mean, I can decom to you. Oh, it's okay. I like the I like the doing it this way. Okay. It's fun. Why is uh where's the Thargoid? On my ass. Okay, I see it, I see it. Or is that the swarm? No, that that's it. Okay, now that heat damage is gone. That is helpful. I feel like, are the Thargon swarms a little janky right now? Like, they don't really seem to be doing much. Mm, yeah, I think so. Maybe. They've hurt themselves in their confusion. I feel like I got a good hit there. Oh yeah. Come on, Thurgy boy. Oh yeah! Whoops, this, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, I think his heart got de-exerted, damn it. this uh oh this fright cannon is actually pretty accurate now at, at long range okay we'll just use a heat sink there a 
Wow, these are super accurate at distance. Oh, wow, I like this frag cannon. I'm not happy about the amount of uh, uh, the cost of it. But I like it. Oh, no. Whoa, excuse me. I think I shot you and rammed you, sorry. That's okay. Uh, where's Thargoid? He's gone and there's a bunch of- oh, there, there he is. More caustic missiles. He's doing the surge. Oh god, okay. Oh, you managed to uh, get off your thingy? Uh, no, I got off my flight assist, so I'm drifting away safely. Oh. They didn't kill me. Uh, but I think I'm about to die from heat damage. Okay. Seven percent. Am I still getting caustics? I don't uh, know, but you no. look like you're in trouble. Yeah, I think I'm dying. Uh, Five percent. Uh, maybe I can make it to you and get a limpet in. Can you limpet me? Yes, as long as I get close enough. Twelve kilometers away, I should make it. Maybe you'll just save me in the nick of time. One can Four percent. Eight kilometers. All I need is four percent. Mm, it's gonna be very close. Almost too close. Uh-oh. 100%. Well, at least they got a hit on him. Limpet underway! Come on, Limpet, do your thing. I think he died. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, well. So, I mean, this is a pretty hard CG, because you kind of have to kill the Tharkoids. <clears throat> Just keep them occupied. I should be able to get back to you, right? You can keep um, the, uh, the signal system. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm fast enough with the fast. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I can fast. just, like, en quickly engineer my uh, uh, power plant so that I'm not, uh, basically, not able to use half my modules. Let's see here. Please tell me I have enough materials. Maybe there are some modules you're not using. Oh, yeah, I'm only overcharged level 3. I can, I can do this. see here and I wish I could just look at my menu but no I have to back out all of the menus to look here and then go okay I need one more level thank you for that F <laughs> Phil are you still uh, you keeping them occupied yes sir everything okay mm, yeah yeah as far as, like, you know, fighting for my life against an evil alien species goes. Okay, launching. Dark Heavy didn't make it back into the, uh... Team, let me send an invite. Yeah, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the wings are kind of acting up right now. It might have something to do with, uh... Just the fact that this is a uh, CG, and, uh... Anytime there are massive amounts of players, expect things to go wrong. Occam's Razor, basically. So I'm going to want to get Super Cruise and then just look for a uh, signal source. Well, thank you. Thank you, Valor. Appreciate them Fs. Lots, much respect. Many deaths. I mean, the cool thing about, uh, you know, killing these Thargoids is ultimately, um... Okay, now where is the team signal? There we go. Uh, when it comes to killing Thargoids, you don't lose... If you kill them and then blow up, you still get the credit. You still get the combat bonds that you can hand in, which I think is pretty cool. Because you will die a lot when <laughs> fighting Thargoids. At least if you're me, you will. You'll die quite a lot. But it's good, I'm a billionaire now. I don't care about money. How much do I have? Three billion. Three billion dollars. Almost enough to buy a second fleet carrier. So why would you? 
If you could buy a second fleet carrier, would there be a point to it? All right, I'm back. All right. All right, Thargoid, remember me? That's right, get over here. Oh, you like that, don't you? Oh, he's not happy about that. For you. I don't know if that actually did anything productive. But... Oh, there we go. There we go. That's a heart. Okay, run away time. Yeah, those those things will actually make me uh, quite overheat. Oh, damn you and your caustic missiles! I'm not falling for that crap. Just run away. I do not like those. You can shoot condas as missiles like me. What? Who shoots anacondas? You shoot anacondas as missiles? Oh, it's so nice to have a canopy again. Yeah, those Stargon swarms, there's something up with them, man. They're not they're not doing their job. Someone needs to help them out. Help a Thargon out. Still about 38% shield. Almost there, 28%. If you, uh, can you, can you help them with that shield or does it just, like, degrade naturally? I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. you actually took him from, like, 20 to 4%. I just right. like shooting at him. His shield's gone. It's gone. Ho ho ho! Oh, he dying! He dying! He dying! Dying? Yeah, he like died. Actually dying? Yeah. That was fast. We bypassed the last heart. We had, th those those guns have so much damn damage. Well, that's nice. Bye bye, Mister Thargoid. I think the swarm's still there though. Oh wait, no, it's gone. Well, that was that was cool. That was pretty pretty good. Only died once. Your challenger just didn't seem to be cutting it. For a Thargoid fights, you mean? I mean, to be honest, even in this crate, it's it's pretty difficult. You think I could uh, snatch the heart uh, in, in the... Yeah, go for it. In the, in the cloud and survive? Do it. This is a bad how idea. Much, how much hull do you have? 82%? Yes. I can, like, send out limpets after you. Um, uh, why are these deactivated? Kind of low range. So wait, hold on. Are my limpets... For crying out loud. Okay, so I guess the Xeno scanner has to be on its own little binding. And decons are uh one. Okay. So I'm gonna send a decon oh wait, out of ammo. Oh, um Yeah, about that. Uh <laughs> Phil. <laughs> I hope you're not relying on uh, that decon. I, I, I have limp this on my own. Okay, okay. That's cool. It's going down like one percent, one percent per second now, but I'm um, decounting now. All right. Well, do you want to head? Well, let's, let's head back to the Bright Sentinel. You can sell your Thargoid heart or put it on your carrier if you want. What do you What do you do with the Thargoid hearts? Do you just sell them? I know there's like a bobblehead you can get with them. Yeah, I don't know what to do with them. You get like the first one gets you that bobblehead, but then after that, I guess you just sell them or maybe collect them. I guess. I don't know. If, I don't, don't, th don't think there's any use of them. Just just a trophy, I guess. Mm. Yeah, SP4H, you're saying you're, you give the FDL a spin, you'll at least be able to outrun them. See, I, I, I um, that, that's what I think my project is going to be for next stream, is to actually buy an FDL for the first time and try that puppy out. But that's going to be a lot of engineering needed to get it where it needs to be. But I don't have an FDL in my fleet, and even though it is, like, you know, a very specific, you know shield tank combat ship like that's what you got to do with it 
I really want to try one. Though I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I start, I need to start getting them down to power play weapons. And I keep talking about doing this, but it, it like, um, I have an idea for power play, but I think it'll take a lot of effort. And right now, I kind of want to get um, my next Dangus episode into uh, production and finish off my How to Die series before I start like mucking around in a new idea. Let me get get my get the ones out of my queue first. You know what I mean? How to not die. Ah, I don't I don't know if I'd be the right person for that series. <laughs> Haven't I mean, mastered it yet. No. Once you know how to die, then not dying should become easier, right? Yeah, FDL is not much faster than uh, the crates, for example. It's still kind of a struggle to go above 550. Really? Yeah. Uh, but it has a lot more guns. It does. Uh, the Clipper is fast, though. It can go uh, over 600 um, in a combat build, so it can outrun even the fast uh, mm -hmm. Foggy Boys. And I actually already have a clipper. That might be interesting too. I never thought about uh, organizing a clipper for like Xeno combat. Only problem is the um, size three hard points are like on the wing, so if we fix weapons, it's really bad. But the size two ones are nice and centered. I feel like I just need just a little bit more power. Oh, it's so annoying when you get to the end of a of a grade and you don't want to go to the next grade and get the the disadvantages. But it's like, I just need that like extra percent, and then every block of material is just does so much little... That, like, such a tiny increase, and it's like, why...? Okay, fine, I'll spend the materials here, because I really just want to get this last one percent. I guess not real. I'm not gonna get this. Unless I go grade five. But I don't want to go grade five. Okay, let me try it one more time. Or wait, hold on. Is there something more efficient that I could do? Like my enhanced low power shields, are they maxed out? Yeah, they're maxed out. Uh, no, I don't think there's anything else I could do other than increase my power plant to grade five, which I don't really want to do. I mean, there's literally like I could make my thing point zero three percent, but then I lose like four, one conductive ceramic. Whereas if I go to five, like yeah, I lose the heat efficiency, which is what I don't want to lose. But I also, oh, I don't have chemical manipulators. What did I run into chemical manipulators? Oh no, I have to do more grinding. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, maybe that did it. Nope, nope, nope. All right, fine. So I guess I can't use the Xeno scanner. Which, honestly, you can't really use um, when they're attacking to start with. Okay. Well, do you want to do one more? I'm down for one more, and then I'm probably mm. going to end the stream. Yeah, sure. Just get off the pad first, you pad blocker. Oh, <laughs> so I can't oh. oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was pad blocking this whole time. <laughs> no, I'm... you were using the pad, not blocking it. You, you, only, you only live long enough. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become a pad blocker. I'm so sorry, sir. Alright, I'll look for a, a signal source. This is fun. I think Thargoid combat is probably, right now, one of my favorite things to do in Elite. It, it really is challenging. It's interesting. I like the sequences and the complexity of it. I like the fact that it's like... You have to exert the heart to shoot the heart. I just think, yeah, the Thargoid swarms right now I seem to be borked. Which, honestly, maybe that's not a bad thing. It's like, g give me a break, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's the, Salvation's plan, in action. The Federal Assault Ship and the Crate Phantom are also kind of can go above 550 as well, so they are good if you want to make sure you can outrun the, the fast uh, one. So FTL, I don't know, sense. it's kind of a shield tanky ship. It's kind of weak on the hull points, which is important for the Thargoid combats. Okay. Which is why all the F FDLs I see uh, in this system, I think they are gankers. Right, because like the Thargoids can penetrate some of your shields, right? Yes. So yeah, it kind of makes the shield tank be a little uh, less useful. You can run the FTL with the Byway too. 
it's uh, definitely possible. Threat three? What the hell is threat three? Just, yeah, two to four scouts. Oh, that's it? Yeah. I'm not finding any really good signal source. I'm looking for a threat six if possible. If you see a threat six. I'll, I'll have a look. They're all far away though. You wanna just try one of these random conflict zones? Like not the capital ship uh, no. ones? No? But there's one not far. Just got a lot of fibers here. Do you see any signal sources? Yeah, I got a lot of Fet 5s, but no 6. Mm. But uh, Threat 5 can be a basilisk. Oh, true, true. Okay. Well, let's go um, pick uh, the closest one. I'll follow you. If you want to go HR Geiger, the Mamba is better. Like, do you mean like like Aliens Geiger kind of kind of style? Geiger style? Oh, but Geiger style. Have you flown the Mamba? Uh, no, I have not flown the Mamba. Or the FDL. What do you prefer? The Mamba is, the Mamba is fun, but you have to fly it like you stole it. <laughs> fly it like you stole it? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to not fly reckless in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. You have to just be crazy in it. Because it doesn't turn well, so you gotta boost a lot, so you, you okay. shoot all over the place. I used to have a frag Mamba, it was fun. That does seem kind of fun, actually. Yeah, I mean, like, the other, like, I was thinking about getting the, the, the federal gunship and the assault ship, uh, going down that line, but I think, uh, I think I want to explore the Mamba and the, and the Fertile Lance, but probably the Fertile Lance first, just because, like, it's such a classic, right? It's like, I, I still can't believe I haven't, I haven't, um, flown it. I mean, it's essentially, it's a large hauler <laughs> with more guns. It kind of reminds me of flying a vulture, you just like a sl very ferocious little beast. Uh, it has a wider hit range with the gimbals than you expect. Yeah. So it's kind of easy to use. You have a big cone uh, where your gimbals work. And you even the ship, uh, even the uh, belly mounted huge one can shoot uh, uh, up a lot more than you expect. Oh really? Okay. Can even shoot like through your hull hull a little bit. It's it's weird but useful. Like in a, in a in a bad way. Like, does it hurt you? Uh, no, 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 in a useful way. <laughs> but oh. it clips, it clips through a little bit. Well, that's nice. And the problem with the FTL is it's only got a size 6 uh, power distributor, so you can't go for the thirstiest guns and still be able to do it. Mm -hmm. First strategically. That's the good thing about the crates, they have the big size uh, 7 one. Also, the FGS has the size 7 one. The power distributor. Yes. Mm, unlimited boost. Yeah, and power. Unlimited power. power. Uh, it's, is it behind this ring or not? Let's hope uh -oh. it's not yeah, behind yeah. this ring. I know that feel. I think I'm gonna oh, crash and go fast. There's, uh, a, there's a threat 5 as well for me. Did you hey, smash I made it? it? You made it? And there are scouts. Woo! Is it just scouts, just scouts or. Uh, just eight scouts, but let's kill him. All right. Whole good practice. I feel like these. This is not the the weapon to to, to fight scout with. But hey, let's give it a try. I, I freaking love these Ow. guns though. These guns are really really fun. They are hurting me. Oh boy. Uh oh no not not fleet Phil not the neutralizer. Oh no not not Phil don't shoot Phil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these aren't that bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That sounds like an angry Minnesotan. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I like how they're all actually going after you for the most part. 
You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, these are a little bit hard to hit with my uh, chargy guns, but oh my god, I love these chargy guns. These are my favorite new guns. Okay. I guess scouts are just, uh, uh, they all count in the, in the terms of like Xeno bounties or whatever, right? Should kill him, right? Right? No, apparently not. Now this 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 targeted flat cannon, holy cow. It's really good from long range. Why am I dying? Felt good. I'm not even, not, not even sure I got the kill on that one, but that felt really good. And of course, I've got caustic damage because why not? It's literally inevitable. Ooh, you. Hee <laughs> hee, that felt good. I really do like these guns. Yeah, they are fun. It was worth the grind. Oh. All right. Line up and deploy. Nope. Let's get him angry first. Boom, boom. Did that not kill him? No, 23% though. That's pretty good. Oh my god, okay. I actually want more of these engineered, uh, pre-engineered flackies. I really like them. It's like a flak cannon that has range to it. That's, that's incredible. Sorry about that. And scouts, uh, I think, are the, probably the best way to get your combat rank up, right? If you're looking to get elite in combat. I think so, still, yeah. Okay. You want some contamination limpets? That's okay, I burned it off. With fire! I like that your ship is called John Romero. Fuck goes the fire <laughs> Yeah. I am a fan of the man. So that was pretty enjoyable. That was pretty good. Though, I, I mean, like, scouts are pretty damn, like, hard to kill. They're just so tiny. They are with the uh, fixed weapons. The, their weakness is uh, throw to the AX multi-cannons. Then I guess for sure them. Right. The gimbaled or whatever, even, would be fine. There are gimbal uh, eggs, not the cannons, only fixed and turrets. Uh, okay, I'm gonna head to the heart of Taurus for a little repair. Because I need it. The yeah, scouts can be dangerous if there are a lot of them. You have oh, to yeah. be quite nimble uh, if you have eight against you. Yeah, I've, I've landed into an instance and just been like almost insta killed by them. There's like 12 of them shooting at me at once. It's like, ah! Oops, oops, I'm going too fast, I'm going too fast. Maybe uh, I can just rings. slam into it. Yeah, I think this is going to be the last thing for me on the stream. It's 1.30 a.m. here. Oh, yeah. Well, that's cool. We can just dock with Heart of Taurus and then call it a night. I wanted to kill more Goids, but that's fine. I can... I might I might do a stream um, either tomorrow or the day after, depending. But I might do some more Thargoid streams. Because I feel like this is an event that I do want to participate in, because, like, this might be a big turning point, right? Maybe not, like, um, Salome levels of infamy, but uh, I think it will be a pretty important thing that commanders talk about for years to come. 
this whole salvation storyline, which they've strung out for like two years, and it's kind of like, okay, it's time to get to the big end game of this. And if there is something really cool, which Scorpius seems to think that, yeah, like, they're not saying it, and I mean, like, you know, I, I don't know if I trust a Frontier community manager anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like, I have the feeling that if they're going to pull out something big, it's going to be at the culmination of this two-year-long story arc, and it better be good. Better not be like, a new mission variant! It's like, instead of delivering data, you're delivering Xeno samples. And delivering a fish. Yeah, deliver fish delivery. Haven't you ever wanted to be a fishmonger? In the galaxy? Alright, well, I'll get out and uh, go to the bar at this mega ship, and then I'll close off the stream for today. But I appreciate everyone uh, coming along and, and keeping me some company. I'll probably be playing a lot of Valheim later today as well. I've been kind of obsessed with Valheim. I'm on a tear right now. Yeah, the Black Forest is my favorite place, actually. It's uh, beautiful. I was very, like, I didn't want to leave the, the, the starting areas because, like, it was so nice. Just, oh, the meadows. Know, yeah, so it's peaceful. so peaceful. Nothing's trying to kill me except those occasional little goblins, which were easy. But then it's like the dark forest with those trolls, man. Even, like, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll build a little fort and then go hide in the fort. Like, they just started destroying my fort, and I'm like, oh, my God. Trolls are serious, man. But then I started getting they fire. Are, yeah. Once I started getting fire arrows, I'm like, okay, now you're just basically a source for me to get skins. <laughs> yeah, you can you can choose them with the bow, you can also do melee combat, but it's more tricky. But yeah, bow is the yeah. best way really to dispatch them. Yeah, so now I'm like, I, I hear there's like, I, I probably have to do more caves. Uh, there, there's a lot of like caves that you have to go into. But uh, ultimately, like I, I heard that there's the swamps and then the swamps, like everything tries to kill you. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, the, the thing after the swamps is even worse, but yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a nice progression uh, thing really. I'm enjoying it. I think it's, it's 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 a fun, unique game that like you know like it is very crafty, and so like if you're not into like crafting games, I can understand people just not liking this. Um, but I like the idea. Like every day, I'm kind of like, okay, what am I gonna do today until the sun sets? It's like, oh, okay, I'll go exploring today, or I'll oh, I need to go get some copper, or I'm gonna do I'm gonna cook all my food. Like it's kind of cool how you 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 sort of block out in your mind like what am I gonna do today in this in this game. Right, because uh, the the you know the, there's a day night cycle in it. So that kind of have you found the, the the tombs yet? Um, yeah, like the circling, uh, like I built a teleporter. Oh yeah. Um, you, you just, need these yeah, like just... cores from. <coughs> yeah, you, you got you, you did the forge thing and whatever. Yeah. So you're working with the bronze, yeah. Yeah, I have I I'm, I want to make a bronze sword. That's my current goal. I finally got the cultivator, which allows me to la like plant trees and shit, which I'm like cool. But like, yeah, it's like uh, when I first found those caves, I remember going down there and then just like making my way pretty significantly far into the cave until there was like a room that was spawning skeletons and I died right outside of it. And I spent the next like like two in-game days just trying to get back to that point to get my stuff because I'm running in naked. Um, <laughs> I had to actually just abandon it, go make new stuff, build that up a little bit so I could go rescue my old stuff. It was kind of, kind of insane, but I was like, that's kind of cool. I like the, the fact that, you know, it's like, again, a weird um, sense where, like, you have to kind of, like, plot what you're going to do today in-game, right? Which is cool. And yeah, great. I recommend doing a sword. Swords are amazing because they're fast hitting Yeah. compared to the axes, which are kind of slow. Yeah, I've been rocking a spear, spear mainly. I'm, I'm a spear guy. Nice. I like, to, I like the pokiness of the spear, but I really want, yeah, I want a sword. And it's like, I think the first one you can get is a bronze sword. Yes. It, it, it's definitely one of those things where, yeah, like, like you're you're constantly making your gear obsolete through uh, advancements or whatever. So it's it's hard um, in this game where it's like, I always get attached to a sword. And then it's like, once you get a better weapon, you're going to move on from it, right? But hey, you can make a little base and then like, you know, put the sword in the corner or something like that. Make it like, you know. Little little homes that you get, you get along the way. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. I, I do enjoy it. Anyway, but uh, yeah, no, thanks for guys for uh, sticking around and 070 all the, out there. I will uh, definitely do my stream next Saturday, but I might do some Twitch stuff. Like if I'm ever not uh, streaming on YouTube, it's on Twitch. If I'm ever streaming off Saturday, I'm gonna try to do more Twitch stuff. Um, but yeah, um, I might see you there. But until then, fly Dangus. 
and enjoy the rest. Uh, can I salute you from here? Can I, uh, this is a, this is my salute. It's a very thick. Uh, it's a yeah. That's my salute. I'm just gonna shake my head. Are you here? Ah, <laughs> there's Phil. Uh, I'm and, here. Yeah. And you're sitting like very close. Yes. <laughs> Actually, no. That's like the normal closeness. I was gonna say like uh, on the carrier when you and Tokoso were, were sitting uh, close together. <laughs> yeah. All right, but uh, thank you very much for, for joining and have a great rest of your day.